Hey, Rose. Gosh darn bee wants to tempt old Black Bart's tummy. With the taste of nuts and honey, it's part of this nutritious breakfast. Know how to sing, bee. I'm gonna tempt your tummy with the taste of nuts and honey. It's honey of the nose. You know, Black Bart eats those ain't half bad. Honey and nuts, huh? Mm. Yahoo! Somebody tell him to stop singing, bee. Oh, Bart. He'll never find us out here. My name's Ice Cream Jones. With cereal, call Ice Cream Cone. He'll never find us. A crunchy new cereal for breakfast. With the great taste of ice cream, ice cream cones. cones. Little cones and puffs that taste like vanilla ice cream cones. Or chocolate chip. The crunchy part of this nutritious breakfast. He found us. As sure as my name's Ice Cream Jones. I'll bring the great new taste of ice cream cones. New ice cream cone cereal. Ronald McDonald and friends in garden full of fun. Ronald, why are you always so busy in the garden? Because something's always coming up. Oh. <laughs> Who won the vegetable race? The lettuce. It won by a head. <laughs> What's red and grows in a vine? A tomato. <laughs> no, a cucumber with a sunburn. <laughs> I love vegetable jokes. Yeah, they're always in good taste. <laughs> a salad at McDonald's. What could top that? A uh, salad dressing. <laughs> It's a Kool-Aid caper clue and a chance for you to help Kool-Aid man find where Scorch is hiding with the key to the Kool-Aid ball. Search high and low where I am, you won't know. Surfing Mary Beach? Well, I'm not bored. Anyway, you look at it. I'm having a ball. Man, surfing Mary Punch. Hey, I got it made in the shade, but I still don't have a clue. But you do. So mark it on your map for a chance to win $100 in toys from Toys R Us. Scorch! Hey, Alan, here's a new Stripe Chips Ahoy cookie. Bet you bite a stripe of fudge. No way I buy this stripe. Oh, yeah? I can still handle it. Difficult, but not impossible. One more stripe coming up. Now that's sneaky. Original, chewy, and now new Stripe Chips Ahoy. Six fudge stripes on the front and one tremendous stripe on the back. Guess I bit a stripe. Which of these leading soft drinks gives you nutrition with vitamin A? You. Vitamin B2? You. Vitamin C? You. Vitamin D? You. Niacin? You. Calcium? You. Potassium? You. Which soft drink gives you all that is 99% caffeine free and tastes delicious? You. Great taste with nutrition. You. Chocolate drink. Another delicious product from You. Hey, kids. All sugar-free gums help you fight cavities. But Extra is the only leading sugar-free gum with NutraSweet that helps fight cavities and gives you extra long-lasting flavor. The only one. Extra sugar-free gum. Among sugar-free gums, Extra is unsurpassed in fighting cavities. And Extra is the only leading sugar-free gum with NutraSweet. And the only one with refreshing flavor that lasts extra long. Extra sugar-free gum with NutraSweet. The only leading sugar-free gum that fights cavities and lasts extra long. There's a place called Moody Hollow where the Firstkins live, and now they've come to Wendy's for you to give. That's right, Firstkins have come to Wendy's. Dudley Firstkin and his country friends, each at a special low price. At Wendy's, that is. Oh, no, Rodney's hungry. Do something. What would Mom do? A little snack, something hot, crisp, fast. Here you go, Rod. All right, I'm microwave fries. Yum. And what do we do when you're finished? Eat slowly, Rodney. I'm leaving. I'm going. Guess there's no point baking Pillsbury's best cookies. Oh, cookies? Fresh You'll never see me again. So creamy smooth. Ah. I mean it. The cookie dough. Oh, you're so chocolatey. Oh, I miss my plane. Mm. Ah, oh. And now look for my new chocolate chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> AIM innovates a special plaque fighting toothbrush. Straight bristles and uniquely slanted bristles feel exhilarating while they help remove plaque. AIM's plaque fighter. Fighting plaque never felt so good. Get your spaghetti ready. 
get ready for ragu thick and hearty spaghetti sauce. Our thickest, heartiest sauce ever. Now your spaghetti's ready. Ragu thick and hearty. Thursday. Let's see what's cooking on TV. It's a belly full of laughs with Bugs Bunny's mm -hmm. Thanksgiving Diet Special. Happy Thanksgiving. Then. Just a turkey based a minute. It's the superstar duck who's certainly no turkey. It's Daffy Duck's Thanks for Giving Special. All Thursday starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on CBS. Oh, yes. Triaminic asks the experts about the common cold. A cold is miserable. I guess it's just part of growing up. When you feel stuffy, you sneeze, and your eyes water, and you're coughing and sneezing, and your chest hurts. My mom is good to me, and she gives me Triaminic and everything. Triaminic cough and cold medicines. What more pediatricians recommend? What moms trust? Shouldn't you? We're just so happy that the cold is over. You just smile. Puff a lump a little closer, baby mine. Puff a lump and be my little clinging vine. Like to feel your cheeks so rosy. Puff a lump, you're comfy, cozy. Cause I love from head to toesy. The puff a lumps. Lovable lumps of snuggly stuff. Puff a lump, mine. Only from Fisher Price. All right, boys. No smiling. Look fierce. Hold still. Next, it's the exciting conclusion of the Gambler Three. The final showdown between the cavalry, the Indians, and the man who became a legend. Sorry, Billy. Brady, no. Linda Gray, Bruce Boxleitner, and Kenny Rogers. Gambler Three. Next. Thursday, from New York, Hawaii, Detroit, and Toronto, join your favorite CBS stars for the 28th Annual All-American Thanksgiving Day Parade. She was alone and lost in the world. Your parents are dead. She's a difficult child, Mrs. Medley. But he had the magic to touch her heart. Sometimes wishing makes things happen. And together, they brought a young boy the gift of love and the will to live. Hallmark Hall of Fame presents a Christmas gift for the whole family. The Secret Garden. My the Apple Christmas from Computer Connections. You know what they want, and now you know where to get it. So what does it take? An apple to fall on you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Dion Warwick. Bring in your step. It makes things lots of fun. Come on and get you some. That clean, fresh taste Wrigley Spearmint's got. That little lift that means a lot. It's that little lift. I'm not ready to go yet, okay? I'm not ready. You gotta wait. Just, I got shit to do. I'm in the middle of something, right? Just hold on. Watch your mouth <laughs> or don't come in here. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, yeah, people. Come on, we're adults here. You know what? <laughs> what is the point? The... Yeah, yeah, we're adults here. I got a fucking Burger King fucking thing on my head. We're all fucking adults here, guys. People, in my chat, two words. What are they? Two words. Let me, let me see the chat flood. Let me see the chat flood. Okay, uh, next caller. Please. Let's get into the meat and potatoes, which translate in American to dick and balls. I, I got flip flops. These are my flip flops. Yeah, I, I really like my, my flip flops. Cause I can like, I can like put them on. I can, and the, cause look, watch me, watch me put them on. I can put them on all by myself. Watch me put, watch me put them on. Look, are you watching? Look, these are my flip flops. Thanksgiving day. I remember it clearly. It was Thanksgiving day. I was, I was inserting myself in somebody else's fucking business as a uh, 
as a cash grab and you know this channel is harsh reality Karen Yak se jodió la sucia vida Amen this is Jonathan Lee Bitches. This is, I have, I have cheeseburgers. I'm gonna put cheese on them. I'm gonna make sure that I have my hamburgers because I'm a big boy now and I can make the hamburgers. My mom lets me use the stove now. And I'm just like, wow, they're, they, I like receipts and, and, and they brought receipts. Like they had, they had evidence to back up everything they said. And I'm like, okay, well, there's got to be another side to this, right? Like, this can't, this can't, no, this is too fantastic. Yeah, because you're not going to just jump to the conclusion that there's a conspiracy amongst cops to cover up a murder. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, cops and just, like, soccer moms and shit. Like, that's what right. made it even crazier. Like, <laughs> um, yeah, get it, Betty. Yeah, get it. Did you have it. a close relationship with your mom? Get it, Betty. Oh, of course, get I it. still do. Yeah. <laughs> My older sister was kind of sad. She was more of the prissy girl. That, like, that is the best done. shit fucking ever. You know, shopping ever. for the dresses with mommy. I was the, you know, boy that liked playing with people. Shout out to Cherry for just being just easily the most faithful and loyal supporter that I've ever had. That someone could have that tenacity with loyalty. Um... And I'm really blessed to have someone like Cherry be part of this channel and in my life. So um, it means a lot. And yes, I named him after Mr. T and Rocky. Say, woman. Say, woman. Say, woman. Sit your old man ain't got no heart. Why don't you come down to my apartment tonight and I'll show you a real man. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so in love with this little dude. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. I love you guys very, 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 very much. And we will do this again very soon, my friends. Oh, say bye. Say bye. <laughs> oh, I love you too. Give me a kiss. Oh, I love you. <laughs> bye, guys. people people oh my goodness oh my goodness oh i had this song stuck in my head like ever since the gym you think that people would have had enough of selling love songs Bro, that bass line is the shit. I'm telling you, man. Shit was just like, just in my head constantly. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, people. I know it's late. Okay. Try to stay with me. All right. I realize it's been a, it's been a long night. Get the. Got the Sean and Turtle Boy thing, and then you got the Turtle Boy thing, and then Turtle Boy's fucking Raggedy Ann dolls, and it's it's a lot to take in, and now you got to deal with my dumb shit. Uh, it's a lot, folks. I understand. I fully understand. Okay, and we're 
We're now I'm going to talk about <laughs> actually, hold on. Let me see. <laughs> let me see if I, I just got an idea. Let me see real quick. <laughs> feel like it's where is that shit hold on if if i could just find this give me a second folks i i just i Oh, okay, it's way before here. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no my goodness y'all off to an early start listen i think we got a super cat super cat i think we got a super cat super cat super cat super cat i think we got a super cat i think we got a super cat Freedom Fighter, thank you so much. Never stop being you. Music is everything. Hi, Clubber. Thank you. Freedom Fighter, I love it. Appreciate you. Um, <laughs> you guys. Oh, man. Oh, my God. This is what happens when you guys hang out with me late at night. This is what happens. This is what happens. Uh, you like that, huh? <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> yeah, but you do. <laughs> but you fucking do. I can't even get to the passcode part. <laughs> I can't even do it. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, I gotta get over So now <laughs> we'll do roll reverse. Oh, he's gonna keep so going. Okay. She's gonna. She's going to ride me this time, okay? So now I'm... Hold on. We're going to unplug this. <laughs> All right. So now... Oh, my God, Joe this fucking gonna dude. ride me, right? <laughs> and so now I'm going to bust that. So... We, it, this can't be the first one. So now she's going to jump on me. And all right, we're going to go like oh this. So the God. butt, phone's on the butt. Yeah. Yeah, you like that? I'm in the gang unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a bald head. I shaved my head. You like that? You like that? Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my god, dude. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's so hot. And I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Didn't work. Didn't call Higgins. Okay. <laughs> now could Siri do it. Okay. <laughs> we gotta get on with the show. We gotta get on with the show. That is too goddamn much. That is too goddamn much. Um. <laughs> so yeah, uh, it's been an eventful evening, folks. It's been an eventful evening. I think it's safe to say. Uh. <laughs> Holy shit, I couldn't even take that, man. <laughs> I haven't done a slow-mo clip in a long time. That that was just what the doctor ordered. Uh, and I fixed I fixed the speed on this one. So now here, moving on. What we're gonna do here is uh 
we're gonna watch uh Vinnie Politan on court TV uh be um he's gonna react. I mean, this is like a 20 minute segment, almost 30 minutes. So uh I have not watched this yet, uh, but I definitely want to watch it. Uh because <laughs> again, man. I want to like Vinny, dude, and Court TV, man, every single fucking time, dude. I don't know what it is with Court TV. I just don't know what it is. But, 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 you know, like Vinny will start to make me feel a lot better about Court TV. And then some jackass will go on Court TV, talk about the case and fuck everything up and just, just put a bunch of bullshit out there that, doesn't make any sense makes me makes it clear to me that they didn't actually research this case at all whatsoever and i'm just like oh every time every time every time all right now let's see vinny i believe in you buddy vinny I believe in you, buddy. Okay, I want you to know that I'm 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 Team Vinny. All right, let's let's see where we're at here. I'm Vinny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us tonight here on Closing Arguments. Big hour. Let's get right into it. We're going to talk about a case where I have one goal, one agenda, and it's just <laughs> it's. It's the disclaimer. It's always Vinny's always laying out the disclaimer from from here on out, dude. The last few times that Vinny has gone on court TV and discussed this case, he's got to lay out that disclaimer. He's got to say, "Hey, listen, I'm not on nobody's side here, okay?" Justice, justice for this man. Take a look. Former Boston police officer John O'Keefe, and the only reason he's a former is because he died. He was killed. He was left in the snow. The question is, how did that happen? If we get to the truth, we will have justice for Officer John O'Keefe whatever the truth is, and we're going to need a trial to do that. Right now, prosecutors say this woman, Karen Reed, is the one responsible. She was back in court today. He was, he was <laughs> her boyfriend. They claim she struck him with a car, left him to die in the snow. She says she's being framed by the people in the house where he was discovered, including other officers who committed the, the killing, murder, and framed her for it let's take a listen because she has a lot of supporters who show up even for pre-trial hearings like today see Vinny, man it is like just polar opposite man Vinny is is not afraid to at least entertain the idea that karen reed might be innocent which shouldn't be that crazy of a notion you know what I mean? Like we we our justice system is designed to to presume someone innocent until proven beyond a reasonable doubt that they're guilty of a crime. So how crazy of a notion that I'm watching someone on a a, a network called Court TV who is actually entertaining this. How crazy is it that I find that rare? How crazy is it that I think that that's weird, that I think that that's unusual? And how crazy is it that Vinny does this, but every single time I see somebody else talk about this case on court TV, it's like they're trying to make up for Vinny <laughs> being open-minded here, and then they just dump a bunch of mad, crazy bullshit out there in regards to this this case that that just paints the narrative that Karen Reed is guilty and and they just get facts wrong it happens it, it, it's consistent it, it, it's it's a pattern how 
many accused cop killers get cheers when they show up in court? I can count them on one hand. One, Karen Reed in Dedham, Massachusetts. <laughs> so today was about uh, uh, several things, but most importantly, the defense is trying now, to... Now, this is old. This is from the day of the hearing. So uh, we're going to see this refresher. We're going to get that refresher course again. I, I still have some thoughts here. Um, and yes, I'm going to sound somewhat repetitive, but uh, the thing is, is that we're getting the entire segment now. Uh, we watched this before, but we didn't get to watch the entire segment because it wasn't put up there yet. But now we have the entire segment. We're going to watch. The, we're going to watch it in its entirety. Trying to prove this conspiracy by police, they believe that's what's happening, but they need to get more information and they want some more phone records. Here's one of Karen Reed's attorneys arguing for access to those phone records. And it wasn't just text messages between them. And I, and I know we've heard this a hundred times already, but I, I got to tell you, the more I hear it, the better of an understanding I have of where we're at with this, uh, with this federal investigation, more or less. Uh, I'm having more of an understanding as far as the federal investigation itself. And I'm having more of an understanding of, of um, Jackson and Gennetti's strategy. After first testifying that he didn't want to talk to Kevin Albert about the investigation, Brian Higgins later admitted that before he testified before the federal grand jury on June 1st of 2023, Higgins and Kevin Albert talked on the phone for a good 15 minutes. Now, I'm never... I got to tell you guys, uh, I'm not doing the Super Chat song anymore, okay? I'm not doing the Super Chat dance anymore. I'm retiring it. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. But I'm going to retire the Cup uh, Church Super Chat dance. Um, and... Uh, best just make a clean break okay just wanted to let you guys know that was two days before he testified before the federal grand jury before he testifies to the feds brian higgins is conferring with kevin albert who supposedly conflicted out of the case so you know my goodness with with all the allegations of witness intimidation thrown around by this da's office and special oh. prosecutors they appoint why has kevin albert never been investigated for witness intimidation and for that matter why has brian albert never been investigated we need this evidence the, these phone records in admissible form that's why we're filing this rule 17 motion we have more than met the requirements of lampron the records are relevant because they tend to show a cover-up. They are relevant because they show a Canton police officer inserting himself into a case in which his department was conflicted out precisely because he was an officer there. They're relevant because they impeach the credibility of Commonwealth witnesses who deny that they are a part of a conspiracy, yet the phone records tend to show they were conspiring together. And don't forget, there's a federal investigation of the investigators in this case. Right. And some of this information that the defense is getting is from that investigation did you did you follow that so you got like the department of justice fbi investigating the local police and investigators in massachusetts who are prosecuting karen reed and her attorneys are getting information from the feds that they say helps them in this case never seen this before um so here's another question what is the evidence exactly Vinny? exactly never seen this before that's why we're all here. Because, I mean, we cover true crime cases. We talk about true crime. Uh, sure. But this is something I've never seen before. And to hear you say it, who's actually an experienced litigator, I believe, um, and host of a show on court TV, uh, well, that tells me a lot that you've never seen this before. And I think one of the reasons, I think it's safe to say that one of the reasons why we've never seen this before is because I don't think 
that there's been a DA's office uh, to, I don't think this, there's been a DA's office to do the things that this DA's office has ever done so brazenly. I think we got a super cat, super cat. I think we got a super cat, super cat. Super cat, super cat, I think we got a super cat. 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 Super cat. Now, do you see what I did there just about a, just a couple of minutes ago uh, when I said that I had retired the Super Chat song? I did something that's going to be very, very relevant. You're going to have to pay a lot of attention to if you're going to follow this case. I did this very, very in interesting thing. I fucking lied. Okay? You're going to see a lot of lies taking place when, when you follow this case. You're going to see... Law enforcement officers fucking blatantly lie, okay? They're going to lie to you. They're going to lie to the invest the, to, to the federal investigators. They've already lied to the grand jury. They've lied to anybody who's taken their statement. I mean, they fucking lied. That's the issue here. Follow the liars. Pay attention to who's fucking lying. It is not that difficult. The people who are probably lying are the people of the, the people who are blatantly lying are the people who are probably nefarious in this entire thing. I mean, and thank you, Street Squirrel, for helping me illustrate my point. I appreciate it. It's in this case that he got struck by a car, right? Because there's no eyewitness who saw this. No independent eyewitness who saw this. I mean, they're going to claim that Karen Reed saw it, but she's not going to say that on the stand. So what's the physical evidence here? Let's take a listen to Alan Jackson, Karen Reed's other attorney, talking about what he found out from the feds. Now Mr. Lally has in his possession another thing from the feds that we didn't have access to. The federal investigators hired, independent of us, we had no idea, and independent of the Commonwealth, hired a professional reconstructionist, three PhDs, to look into exactly this, this issue. Did Karen Reed's car, did her SUV make contact with John O'Keefe? And their conclusion to a person was his injuries were inconsistent with the damage on the car. The, in, the damage on the car was inconsistent with having been made, having made contact with John O'Keefe's body. In other words, the car didn't hit him and he wasn't hit by the car, period, full stop. That's their <laughs> independent expert, not ours. Okay, let's take a look at some more evidence. How the vibe I'm getting from Vinny here is, all right. Tired of the bullshit. The bullshit, it's got to go. Okay? Let us let me do a segment here where I point out everything that is fucking wrong with this case. Why would these... When, when we say things like we've never seen this shit before, it's because we haven't. Okay? We have never seen a DA... And the people working under him work in such concert together in order to blatantly be so negligent. And basically just fuck you. And it's really weird, man. It's really weird how whenever that, that moment where Auntie Bev makes a joke about Lolly not complying with any of her orders. She thinks it's funny. So she acknowledges that this is fact, that this guy just f tells her to fuck off, basically, whenever she gives him an order. And, and then her response to this is not to 
to sanction. Her response is not to reprimand in any way, shape, or form. Her response is to joke about it. When the life of a woman is on the line because she's being accused of murdering a police officer, but it's a joke. Elaine gifted five memberships. Thank you so much. Um, Caroline Fourth, Sarah, Catherine, Lady D12, JGAM78. Right on. Congrats, guys. And thank you so much. I appreciate you. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's mind blowing. I've never seen any shit like this in my life, dude. I've never, this is a farce. Like, if I saw this shit in a movie, I'd be like, what in the fuck is going on here? <laughs> How is this real life? It's related to this. We have a photo. This is um, the morning that John O'Keefe's body was found on this yard. And you can see the snow conditions. Now it snowed overnight. I don't think there was this much snow when Karen Reed was dropping them off because it really hadn't started yet. Right. But this is the level of snow cover that we're talking about when John O'Keefe's body was found and discovered early in the morning. You could see the police uh, arrive. You can tell by the footprints, dude. You can tell by the footprints. How deep the snow really is. Like a six foot man is going to be visible, dude. A six foot man is going to be visible in that snow. Even if snow had fallen on him, he's going to be visible there. And discovered early in the morning. You could see the police uh, arriving there as well. Now, let me give you some of the details about um, John O'Keefe's body. He was wearing two shirts, jeans, and had one sneaker on. And I'm not sure, sneaker, tennis shoe, whatever you call it in your part of the country, um, I don't know where the other one is. Uh, approximately six inches of snow covering him. Again, it snowed overnight, so he had to be on the ground for a while. Um, he's located on the left side of the yard, about eight feet from the street. Eight feet from the street on the yard. He's found lying on his back, bleeding from his face and nose, surrounded by drops of blood and shards of glass. Have some more photos for you. Warning, blood, blood spatter. This is uh, on the snow. Blood spatter on the snow on the yard. The one problem I have with that is, did it snow? How much snow was there at the time he was struck and on the ground? And is the snow on, is the blood on top of the snow? Is it underneath? I think that's important, but I'm not an expert. Right. But how did that snow get on the top of the snow? Considering how much snow fell, finally, that would be very, very easy to, I mean, cover up. The snow would just cover that up. So what in the fuck? I think we got a super cat. Super cat. I think we got a super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. Super cat. We got a super cat. Scott McGinnis, thank you so much, buddy. Uh, this has come to a head. DA Morrissey still forward uh, forwards this case. He has made sure Auntie Bev was the judge, ensured Lolly was his prosecutor. He has jailed Turtle Boy, char charged protesters. The feds are coming. Now, yeah, see, that's the interesting thing, Scott McGinnis, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much, by the way. Um, but let me let me uh, let me address something here. You know, I keep seeing these idiots on Twitter uh, constantly saying things like, uh, "Oh, well, wh why why didn't why why haven't the feds indicted any of these people? Why if it, why it, boom it, like they they go they they act like it's a big bomb drop boom 
Higgins' lawyer says that he's not the target of the investigation. Brian and Kevin Albert's lawyer says that they're not targets of the investigation. Boom! Well, no, they're not targets of the federal investigation. It's because the federal investigation isn't the isn't investigating John O'Keefe's death. This is what people don't seem to understand. They don't want to understand this shit. <laughs> and I find that fucking fascinating because Brian Higgins was not put in charge or even assigned in any way, shape, or form into the investigation of John O'Keefe's death. Neither was Brian Albert. Neither was Kevin Albert. Neither was Berkowitz. So now Berkowitz still may be a target of the investigation at some point, but um, the thing is, is, is they were not, the, the federal investigation is targeting those who had, who, who were part of the investigation, who were tasked with the investigation, such as Michael Proctor, such as Brian Tully. So these folks are part of the investigation. So they would absolutely be targets in the investigation, if not now at some point, most definitely. But we know that Michael Morrissey's office is the main target of the investigation. Anybody else, they're just anybody who they can indict. But Michael Proctor is absolutely target of an internal investigation. Now, here's what's probably going to happen. This is what's probably going to take place is once, once they start handing out indictments, federal indictments to those who are the targets of the federal investigation, then what will probably happen is they will have to revamp and re just, just completely and totally do a, a, a an overhaul on the investigation into John O'Keefe. And so the Massachusetts State Police will more than likely still be involved, except Michael Proctor will be charged and have nothing to do with it. So basically, the Massachusetts State Police is probably going to have to start from scratch. But make no mistake, John O'Keefe's death still falls under, Mass under the Massachusetts State Police uh, jurisdiction. They're still in charge of that investigation. That hasn't changed. And that's probably not going to change. But the federal investigation into the investigation is going to uncover a lot. And I'm sure this stuff is going to be applied in by the Massachusetts State Police when they conduct this overhaul investigation into John O'Keefe's murder. But everybody's acting like there's some, you know, you got these idiots on Twitter doing like a victory dance because, <laughs> because these attorneys are like, boom, there it is. Right there. Not a target of the federal investigation. Well, right. Nobody said they would be targets of the federal investigation. Anybody who's been paying attention knows they wouldn't be targets of the federal investigation. There's no reason why they would be targets of the federal investigation. They weren't tasked with the responsibility of getting John O'Keefe justice in any way, shape, or form. None of them were. It's going to be those, those folks that are going to get indictments. Those folks that are going to be targets of the federal investigation. I'm just a lawyer. Let's take a look at his arms. <laughs> Vinny um, said, I'm just a Officer lawyer. Officer O'Keefe's arms. Remember, this is a big part. Is that consistent with being struck by a car? Is that consistent with being in a fight? Is that consistent with being attacked by a dog? And I'm trying to figure out, he had two shirts on, he didn't have a jacket, he was going bar hopping. And let's talk about this. Okay, so they found glass near him, right? Okay. That kind of sounds like it could be incriminating if you're not much of a thinker. But the fact is, is they, A, they said that this was the result of blunt force trauma. That's clearly not blunt force trauma. 
We've Googled blunt force trauma before. Or blunt object. We've Googled it. <laughs> so, I mean, initially they said glass, though. But here's the thing. Let's just say that that is glass, right? Where Where's the reports where samples of glass were taken from those injuries? Where's the report? It doesn't exist. You know why it doesn't exist? Because they never took samples of those injuries. Not only did they not test these samples, there were no samples to test because they never took the samples. Now, do you think injuries like that, you don't think that that's suspicious in any way, shape, or form that the medical examiner would not take samples of those wounds, those fresh wounds taken off of a, off of a police officer, a dead police officer who died under suspicious circumstances? I mean, they would... They would go over everything that even looks out of place on his body with a fine tooth comb, figuratively speaking. They would absolutely do this. They would not, they would not look at injuries like that that are blatantly obvious and not do anything about them. Just ignore them. Why would they do that? So even if they wanted to go with the glass theory, they can't because they never even took samples. There's nothing to ever indicate that any glass was ever in any of those wounds. So it's not even a thing. So since they can't do that, they decided to go with blunt force trauma. Something less believable. And yet it's a big mystery why the Norfolk County District Attorney's Office is under federal investigation. It's a big mystery. It's 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 corruption coming from Josh Levy, according to Plevin, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Right. Not even swapped, Jody. Not even swapped. Not one sample even collected. Happening that night, yeah, it's cold, but if you're from up there and you're a Boston cop and you're going drinking, you're not wearing a jacket. You don't need a jacket. Um, but to me, that's important as well. Now, one more thing I need to show you because it's all about the tail light. There's a lot of uh, a lot of this case for the prosecution depends upon this tail light. There she is backing up the following morning. Does she strike the car? Would that cause something to happen to her tail light? Is her tail light damaged? because it should be damaged at this point because they say she's already run him over and killed him. So look at the look at the tail light and I think it's going to be that back right one. Is it damaged by backing into that car in John O'Keefe's driveway afterwards or is it even damaged enough that it looks like it would have done everything that happened because remember the defense is saying, "Oh no, they took the tail light afterwards and planted evidence." They were playing around with the car and they planted evidence after the fact. How would they do that? When would they do that? Take a listen. Yeah. Um, Here we go, Vinny. Police Chief Berkowitz on February 4th. Go, Vinny. Go. 2022, six days after John O'Keefe was found dead. Um, I was working as the detective sergeant when I was contacted by Lieutenant Gallagher, who advised me that Chief Berkowitz was at 34 Fairview Road. That's the scene of, of this, of the death. And had possibly discovered more evidence. Six days afterwards, discovering more evidence. He directed our attention to the area where O'Keefe had been discovered. I was able to observe a red broken... I think we got a super dance. Super dance. Super dance. I think we got a super chat. I think we got a super chat. <laughs> oh my goodness, what do we got here? Val Casagranda. 
Val Casagranda, number one troll, has seriously been able to answer how clear pieces of glass were found at the first search and no red pieces of taillight. Come on. Exactly. Right. The first search, no pieces of taillight. None. But clear pieces of glass. Right? Okay. Thank you, Val. Appreciate you. Six days afterwards, discovering more evidence, he directed our attention to the area where O'Keefe had been discovered. I was able to observe a red broken piece of hard plastic, which appeared to have been broken off of a motor vehicle light fixture. The temperature overnight had reached 45 degrees with heavy rain, which melted much of the snow from the storm. This revealed much of the area that had originally been covered in deep snow. I showed you the pictures of the snow, how much there was. Defense is going to say it was planted. Prosecution is going to say, well, we didn't find it at the scene because it was covered by snow. <laughs> Should they have shovels? I don't know. No. They Let's take a, a listen to the prosecutor. No, talk, Vinny. They had a leaf blower, buddy. Talking about what he found in the bumper of Karen Reed's car. This is important. Damages to the right rear corner uh, panel of the defendant's vehicle. Embedded within the bumper to that vehicle is pieces of a cocktail glass. The victim, Mr. O'Keefe, is last observed on surveillance. Did you test it for cock? Did, did, did you test it to find out if it was cocktail glass? I'd love to see that report. Was it tested against other cocktail glasses? How do you know it was a cocktail glass, Lolly? video external surveillance video from the waterfall establishment that he left just prior to going to 34 fairview fairview excuse me with a cocktail glass in his right hand same arm is injured the same type of glass that is then uh, recovered from the bumper of the defendant's car okay but you didn't test it though bar hopping has a glass takes it from the bar has it in the cars they're going to the house gets out of the car and then when uh, he gets struck and murdered by Karen Reed, that cocktail glass breaks and ends up in her bumper. That's the prosecution theory. <laughs> what is this evidence consistent with? What Nothing. unanswered questions need to be answered? Well, that evidence isn't consistent with anything. That's the whole point. There's no consistency because the chain of evidence, the chain of custody of this evidence is fucked. <laughs> I mean... The chain of evidence of all this, the, the chain of custody of all this evidence is fucked. Because again, there's glass on the bumper. That glass, that could be any glass. And I'm not saying, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not asking you if you what you personally think. I'm asking you if you're a fucking juror. And a defense attorney comes along and says, okay, um, did you, uh, who, whoever found the glass, whoever decided to log it in as evidence and and theorize this, <laughs> this 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 scenario here that 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 Karen hit him with the car while he had a cocktail glass in his hand and it broke and it pieces of the cocktail glass got embedded in her bumper. Okay, great. Um, could you show me the report where uh, they tested this as to being a cocktail glass? I mean, was there, could you show me the report where they showed residue of alcohol, of an alcoholic beverage, traces of a certain alcoholic beverage? What was John drinking that night? Can you find me traces of, of, of that beverage? Can you match that glass with gl glasses from the establishment that he supposedly brought the glass from? So, I mean, all of these things, as soon as <laughs> as soon as the defense attorney gets a hold of whoever's sitting on the stand and is subject to these questions, well, I mean, it's game over. It's game over. The whole point of all this is that for some reason, 
You've got a bunch of people who are in that house that are fucking lying. And then you also have, <laughs> and then you also have an investigation that nothing is airtight. No part of this investigation is airtight. No evidence that they're planning on presenting can't be just riddled with holes by the defense. Easily. Easily. It hasn't even been presented, and I could poke holes all through it. Because the chain of custody on all of the evidence is fucked. And the lead investigator is now under internal investigation because of this case. So the lead investigator, his credibility is already fucked. And yet, for some reason, Judge Bev is even considering taking this to trial. It's fascinating. Like I said, I'm just a lawyer. I need an expert. <laughs> Let's bring in the best. Our special guest, crime scene expert, key forensic witness, and star of the trial of Alex Murdoch, owner of Ken. Oh, Vinny. Vinny was like, Let's bring in the best. <laughs> like, hell yeah. Kenny Kinsey and Associates, Dr. Kenneth Kinsey is back with us. Great to see you tonight. How are you? Great, Vinny. Glad to be back. And thank you for asking. Let's start here. We laid out some of this evidence. We tried to send you some more evidence, some pictures that we can't show on television. Um, what what's your initial gut reaction to this evidence, right? What is what is what is the first thing that's coming to your mind as you're examining some of the circumstances and the evidence and the allegations here that she struck him while doing a K-turn? So I don't know how fast you do a K-turn, a three-point turn. We call them K-turns in Jersey, uh, where you would change directions right so you're going to pull out pull back and then pull away um what are your thoughts tonight doc <laughs> hey mr ken kinsey kenny vinnie looking at looking at the injuries uh that i looked at earlier they have they appear to be some type of impression injury uh their lacerations uh small cuts whatever you want to classify them as What's most concerning is if these can't be matched to a source. You know, you've got to know, you've got to find what that unknown is. If they can't be matched to a source, and and I understand the, you know, the, the lawyer jargon, and I understand what defense attorneys are supposed to do, and they're supposed to cloud the water. But if truly those injuries are not consistent with something in that yard, in that general vicinity, of this victim or on that vehicle, I believe they have problems with this evidence yeah. because it should be able to be replicated and you ought to have a, a source. <laughs> yeah, my man, the dog's gone. <laughs> that you can attribute to those injuries. You also ought to have some corresponding injuries on the other side. You know, you mentioned earlier he was face up. So there ought to be some type of crushing injuries or some, something else that corresponds with this. Uh, the glass, you mentioned, was there a glass found there? Were there fragments found at the scene that could be, you know, possibly compared with those glass fragments found in the bumper of the vehicle? I mean, there's so many ifs that we just don't know, but this physical evidence will not be very important if whoever's examining it can't find a source. Okay. How about All right. Well, hey, the best... Let me, I'm here to tell you the best, the best lawyer on court TV, according to Vinny. I'm here to tell you, that's just a drop in the bucket, my friend. That is just a drop in the bucket of unreliable evidence that the prosecution plans on using to prosecute Karen Reed. And it's insane that it's even going to trial. Insane. Now, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> But I don't think it takes a lawyer to realize this. I mean, I just, I don't think it takes a lawyer. How about where he's found? Eight feet from the street. Now, the snowstorm hadn't really hit when, when he was getting out of the car. It, I, maybe it had just started. It was cold, but the storm was coming, right? Then while he's laying on the ground, 
All the snow falls on top of him. How about the fact that he's eight feet from the street? Does that have any significance to you? And what other type of evidence would you expect to find if he's struck by a car and ends up eight feet um, from the street uh, on the yard? Well, Vinny, eight feet, that's two times the width of a sidewalk. That doesn't necessarily uh, bother me at all. It just depends on the driver. You know, there's a lot of factors. Where was there any in, intoxication involved? Yes. You know, was yes. he struck no doubt. and thrown? No doubt. There was. An, yeah. He was. He he had been drinking. She had been drinking. There's no doubt there. There's video of them inside the bar, so we know that for a fact. Yeah, and I mean, was he thrown there? It, it's so hard to tell without the variables. But one thing's for sure: snow doesn't put injuries on you and impressions on you and so it sure is fucked up top the snow or under the snow they should find something that corresponds something that caused these impressions on this victim's arm and if they didn't find that this evidence is you know only helpful to the defense in my opinion are you concerned that a piece uh, an alleged piece of that of that tail light is found 6 days later by the Canton police chief who happens to be, for whatever reason, going by, because he's not the investigating agency. Canton police are out of it um, because of the conflicts. Are you bothered by them not finding it on the day that they found his body? It's definitely concerning, Vinny, but I've mentioned many times I've never worked a perfect crime scene and you know, very few people can ever claim they have. My problem with that uh, theory is that how would they have known that the defendant the problem with that theory is that it's absolute and utter bullshit back to her car she definitely made contact with that other vehicle in that video now was it enough to break that lens and my question that i asked myself how would this other individual have known to go there and look for that plastic to go and you know plant it at the scene so you know you're looking you got to look at some staging if, if these theories are true, you got to cover up, which is... Okay. The reason why he would know is because it was already discussed between Jen McCabe, Carrie Roberts, and Karen Reed. This is a fact that he, he does not know. This is another person who has not actually really familiarized with himself with this case. And again, I do not really hold that against the panelists on court TV when talking about this case. Uh, these are people like, these are experts that are debriefed basically. Uh, and then, and then they comment based on what they've been debriefed on. They, they, they haven't done their own deep dive into these, into this case. Um, so the thing is, is, you know, he's sitting there going, well, you know, I question when he would have the opportunity. How would he know? How would Proctor know? that she had hit the, the other car and to do something with the taillight. Well, it's because Carrie Roberts, Jen McCabe, acknowledged the fact that Karen Reed's taillight was cracked. And, I'm, and I quote, cracked. So this right here would get those wheels turning, would get Proctor's wheels turning. For sure, for sure. So, I mean you're not gonna he's he he hasn't familiarized himself with the case the way that we have so he he doesn't know these things um i you give me 30 minutes with this guy and he's gonna go wait a minute what every fucking 30 seconds wait what is that true that's 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 what anybody who has I would imagine who has any experience in law when they when when they're explained these details based on their questions they're going to they're going to go wait a minute that can't be right what no way well look it's all right fucking here <laughs> it's all right here which is a conspiracy. You got some staging 
And then you got ad hoc or premeditated. You know, being that alcohol and possibly anger was involved, I would probably say it wasn't premeditated at the time that, you know, this police officer lost his life. But there are a lot of reasons that people stage crime scenes. So it, it just depends. But the evidence is the evidence, like you mentioned earlier, and snow or no snow, that he, somebody better be finding something that caused these impressions. Because if not, I think it gives plenty of, of reasonable doubt. Let's talk about the speed of, of the vehicle. Is, is, is See, the Now, finally, at least, you know, because the one thing that this guest is consistent with the other guests is that he hasn't fami familiarized himself with the case. So that that's consistent with, with every other guest. But the thing is, is this guy seems to actually have some common sense. You know, clearly he understands how evidence works, right? Like, it, it's really frustrating to, to listen to a bunch of fucking lawyers go on court TV and act like they don't fucking know how evidence works. Experts. Law enforcement, former law enforcement agents act like they don't know how fucking evidence works, especially in a court of law. But at least this guy is going, well, you know, he's finding doubt in everything. That's what he's doing. This is what you do. You think critically. This is how you think critically. How you think critically is when you say, okay, well, this person is guilty. You're telling me that this person is guilty based on what? And then once they hear that, that, that what? They try to see if they could poke holes in it somehow. And if they can't poke holes in it, then it's like, okay, well, this person might might be guilty. Okay, we'll see. We'll have to find out what happens at trial. Or in this case, if it gets dismissed as well. But you 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 can't, I mean, it's it's just crazy to me that 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 this is the the first guy that I've seen as a, as an expert panelist on court TV discussing this case. This is the first one that seems to have just basic common knowledge of how evidence works and has this process of elimination. Okay, give me what the prosecution is planning to use as evidence, and then I'm going to see if I could poke holes in it. Simple. That's what we all do. That's what any any of us critical thinkers do. Is that part of the equation here? Like, does a car need to be going a certain speed to cause that kind of damage to take the life of someone? And again, the theory here from from prosecutors is that she backed into him. Whether you know initially they thought they said it was not on purpose then they looked at more evidence they said the backup cameras were working they found some voicemail messages where she's screaming at him calling him uh, different names so they feel like there was some some problems in the relationship the backup camera works in her vehicle um are you is there a, a certain speed do you We got a super chat. I think we got a super chat. Ooh, <laughs> thank you, Erica Madden. That's very generous. I appreciate that. Uh, wow. Thank you to all that joined us yesterday for the drive in to donate and free picks with Benny the Bunny. We raised $800 for Karen's legal defense funds. Wow. That's great. Great news. Good for you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, Erica. Do you think that they would need to cause these types of injuries? Is that a question that needs to be answered as well? I believe speed is definitely an element. You've also got to look at the positioning of the victim. How high was the victim? How fast was the vehicle moving? Because if that vehicle is moving fast enough and that victim is high enough, you're going to have two impacts. You're going to have the vehicle hit the victim and then the victim strike the vehicle because of the momentum. He's so about all of six that foot comes four. into play. He's about six foot four. Yeah. I think they got a super cat. 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 I think they got a super c
<laughs> Scott McGinnis, thank you again, buddy. Court, Court TV is lamestream media. They are government controlled. To get to the truth in Karen Reed is to acknowledge police and DA corruption. Um, agreed. Agreed. But it's also to start asking questions. And I think Vinny is, is doing that. Um, he's definitely going against the grain, uh, it seems like, as far as um, what uh, Court TV's narrative seems to be trying to go with. Vinny seems to be doing his own thing, which I think is pretty interesting and cool. Um, uh, he's definitely playing devil's advocate here, uh, as far as like the narrative that court TV overall seems to be wanting to push. But I'm saying height of the vehicle, you know, was it on the sidewalk? Was it in the driveway? Oh, I mean, all and, that comes to camera. Sorry, I've got, uh, a membership too. Um, um, uh, mob. Star drive in, yum. Member for two months, right on. Thank you, appreciate you. Generally speaking, if you're going to run over someone backwards, they've got to be at a pretty low position, or they've got to be pinned between two objects. But I'm certainly not suggesting that it can't happen other ways. So let's let's get back to the eight feet now. So if you're backing into someone, running them over backwards, do you would you push them? Do, would they? Would, would their momentum push them backwards or would they get run over? Would they get pushed back? Would we be looking for tire? I mean, I, I like this guest. I like this panelist, but I mean, he's not an expert on fucking vehicle velocity and force of, of, of a drunk hit uh, <laughs> from the back of the vehicle and whatnot. He, he's not an expert on any of this stuff. tracks on the on the yard all of the above Vinny certainly if their midline or the center of gravity of their body is under the the mass line for the vehicle I, I would believe that it would push them down it it would be like a blade of grass with a lawnmower <laughs> if that vehicle's moving fast enough and they're above that midline I believe you're going to see what what we're we associate with the hit and run in the movies, you're going to see that body ejected and move it, moved over that vehicle. Great information tonight. As always, we need experts and we got the best for you folks. Uh, Ken okay. If he is an expert, then he is an expert. I stand corrected. I appreciate you. Kenzie, thank you so much. Uh, have a great night. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Vinny. All right, folks, when we come back, Let's bring him in. Think Tank live in the studio. Can Karen Reed win this case? Can prosecutors win this case? Will the truth come out? That's next. You saw this dude all fucking... Look at, look at this guy's face right here, bro. Look at him. Prosecutors win this case. Will the truth come out? That's next. <laughs> drug ring, a double murder, and deadly secrets in a small town. Prosecutors allege Timothy Vero killed two women because he believed they were being mortified. We're moving close. Hey, no or no snow, they, somebody better be finding something to cause these impressions because if not, I think it gives plenty of, of reasonable doubt. Dr. Kenny Kinsey, you recognize him from the Alec Murdoch trial, uh, evaluating the Karen Reed officer John O'Keefe case. John O'Keefe was found dead in the yard. Um, was he run over or was he beaten to death and then left out in the snow? Those are the two things the jury's going to be thinking about. Um, what does our think tank think? Let's bring him in. Joining us tonight live in studio, criminal defense attorney, entertain. Why do I not have high expectations for this panel sitting there <laughs> like at all <laughs> came to attorney former assistant da in atlanta daryl cohen also with us tonight magistrate court judge criminal defense attorney former prosecutor kimberly bando and finally we bailed him out back by popular demand the man behind the glasses <laughs> criminal defense attorney josh schiffer and I did wear the purple tie in honor of the return of the man. This guy is just so fucking 
so pleased with himself behind the glasses all right so what do you think about because this case the jury's got to figure out what happened are they going to get the truth well my first thought is did this happen in framing him secondly is it possible framing him is it oh. that's that's not elton john bro that's fucking the uncle from uh not even the uncle the dude from beetlejuice <laughs> you know who i'm talking about like, I don't even remember the guy's name. The dude from Beetlejuice. He's... <laughs> Delia. Awesome. Oh, oh, that Is took a minute to land. That Karen's eyesight was blurred, so she was unable to read, and she misunderstood and thought what was R was actually D. Or D, which was is R. actually R, yeah. I think she was doing a K-turn, though. She's, she's, if she's dropping him off, here and she's got to go back the other way where she came. You pull out, you pull back, then you pull forward. No, not Michael. Right? But when you're wasted, yeah, that's the problem. Can the state make the physical evidence make sense? Otho, that's where, that's you know, him. we're always talking about how the physical evidence is. Thank you. It's fucking Otho, dude. <laughs> it's fucking Otho. <laughs> Delia. This is one of the great rock solid parts of criminal defense and prosecution. It doesn't lie. But we all looked at those pictures. We all heard this explanation of how his body was located when he was apparently hit at what must have been a fairly low speed. We're not talking about 50 miles an hour. We're talking it, about yeah, a I don't think it can be 50 miles an hour backing no, up. We're looking at arm injuries with scratches. We're not looking at tire tracks. I've worked lots of run over injured people cases. You get hit by a vehicle, there's serious physical damages. Yeah. You've got a lack of physical in, or damages to the vehicle. You've got a cracked light. We don't have a light that's... Exp right. Yeah. So a plastic fucking bumper. Now I'm starting to feel bad fucking shit talking this guy. Um, you got a plastic bumper, right? And like this piece of tail light right here like it's so fucking dense if i were to have like a like if i had a piece of plastic bumper right now like it would be fucking it would be so thin it's so easy to crack it's the easiest thing to crack there's no way you're gonna tell me that the bumper didn't cause anything not even a scratch there's not even a scratch on the rest of the vehicle but you've got this tail light that's broken and and the injuries just aren't consistent with with that. It, it, they're just not. What do you mean for some reason, Gregor? It's it's a good song. That's the reason. The reason is it's a good song. You can tell everybody. Exploded. We don't have dented body pit. No, we have some really minimal damage on a vehicle. Anybody who's hit a deer or knows someone that's hit a deer knows that bodies and cars don't mix it's huge damage then we get to the snow blood on top of six inches of snow. physical right. doesn't add up kimberly i'm still on a drunken state possible backing up because of the short glass i'm not ready to relieve that um to leave that theory yeah. alone yet well, I'm well, still here, there. here's the thing though from, from the prosecution perspective in this case what they do have are these fragments on officer o'keefe so the only innocent explanation for karen reed is that she was framed that they're literally planting evidence after the fact on the victim planting evidence at the scene perhaps cracking her tail light a little more to get a few more fragments i mean that's what they're going to argue they can argue till the cows come home and cows don't move very quickly in snow so I, what 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 does that mean it <laughs> means to me that it's possible that she backed into him by accident they can argue till the cows come home and cows don't move very quickly in snow so I, what 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 does that mean what the fuck are you talking about dude that it's possible that she backed into him by what? accident having an what the fuck accident he may have actually moved a little bit, eight feet or not, and then he died in the snow. 
I don't think anyone is saying that she intentionally tried to kill him. But that's what the prosecutor is saying. What are you talking say, about, bro? Dude. Shut your fucking mouth! Shut the fuck up, you cunt! Shut it! Get the fuck out of here. It's exactly what yeah, they're saying. It's not what the evidence it's a, is. Okay, it's not what the evidence is, was but it's exactly kill, what the DA is saying. But if she was trying to kill him, she would have gone a lot more quickly than she did. She may have slammed on the gas, hit him, and then moved forward. I don't think anyone in his or her right mind would say that she was actually trying to kill him, hit him maybe, teach Except him a lesson. The that's, that's the point, dude, is the district attorney is fucking saying it. They upgraded her charges. Dude, hey, go back to bed, and we'll wake you up when it's all over, okay? The rest of us are going to keep talking about this because you clearly were napping. Dude, the prosecution, they upgraded her charges from manslaughter to second-degree murder. Homie, like, what the fuck are you talking about, guy? Where are you? Where are you? We're over here, bro. Where are you? District attorney and all the investigators. Especially, I said in their right back mind. to the scene. What murderer goes back to the scene and say, oh, this is where I committed my murder. Here's the body. And remember, she's right. drunk as a skunk, according to everything we've read. We're not talking about someone right. acting and, necessarily and, and that's logically. that's consistent with, with Daryl saying, if you are drunk and you, and you may not even realize what you had done, yeah. even with a backup camera. Absolutely. And, and really what the problem comes in, we've seen this with a lot of trials recently, it's not that there wasn't an investigation. It's not that law enforcement didn't make some good conclusions that make sense. Sufficiency of no. the investigation. No, it's it's exactly that, dude comes in we've seen this with a lot of trials recently it's not that there wasn't an investigation it's not that law enforcement didn't make some good conclusions that make sense they made no conclusions that made sense that's actually the point that's one of the overall points there's a lot of points there's a lot of overall points one of the major points is that they did not conduct a sound investigation at all whatsoever they did not draw any good sound conclusions None. That is the one consistent thing that Proctor has done is not come up with any sound conclusions. The sufficiency of the investigation. This is a sloppy investigation. Before we get into the random nearby cop with He's an right. ice to grind showing up. He's right. I mean, this whole investigation is fucked. It's absolutely fuck. I like this guy, dude. I like this guy a lot. I feel kind of bad fucking <laughs> roasting him about his. <laughs> but I like this guy. He's at least like, and he's aggressive about it too. Six days later and Chief. finding the, the evidence. Yeah, come on. This is Massachusetts. If there is a community outside of New Jersey that knows local corruption, it's Massachusetts. Uh, I don't see that. Ah. I just see as a chief of police. I love it. Wasn't happy with the investigation. Went by there. It had rained. And all of a sudden, that which was hidden in the... I, I got to hear my man one more time, up, dude. Carol saying, if you are drunk and... Let's hear this guy's rant one more time. I'm loving this guy. And you may not even realize what you had done, yeah. even with a backup camera. Absolutely. And and really what the problem comes in, we've seen this with a lot of trials recently. It's not that there wasn't an investigation. It's not that law enforcement didn't make some good conclusions that make sense. Sufficiency of the investigation. This is a sloppy investigation. Before we get into the random nearby cop with an ax to grind showing up six days later and Chief. finding the, the evidence... Yeah, come on. This is Massachusetts. If there is a community outside of New Jersey that knows local corruption, it's Massachusetts. I don't see that. I just see as a chief of police wasn't happy with the investigation, went by there, it had rained, and all of a sudden that which was hidden in... Okay. So here's this guy acting like that's innocent. You know what I mean? Here's this guy acting like Berkowitz going by there randomly is perfectly innocent, right? I love that shit. L like, listen to this guy. Listen to this guy's. Listen to this guy's fucking logic, dude. It's Massachusetts. I, I don't see that. I just see as a chief of police wasn't happy with the investigation. Went by there. It had rained, and all of a sudden, that which was.
okay, dude, listen to me, bro. You, you, like I said, go back to bed, homie. Go back to bed. Like, we're over here. First of all, he's not the chief of police. He's a retired chief of police. And he's a retired chief of police of the law enforcement agency that was not investigating and has nothing to do with investigating John O'Keefe's death. Okay? So it was very weird. Okay? Him not being happy with the investigation and then inserting himself into the investigation is absolutely and totally inappropriate. Because the Canton police have nothing to do with the investigation. So he had no business, especially since he's not on duty. So he had no business going and investigating and finding pieces of taillight because he wasn't happy with the investigation. But that's not even what happened. You're saying that's what happened because you don't know shit of what you're talking about. You don't know anything of what you're talking about. You have not followed this. You have not, you have not been paying attention. You think that it's the chief of police, the acting chief of police of the investigative uh, agency that 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 is that, that is investigating John O'Keefe's death. Wrong. It's the Massachusetts State Police that is investigating the death of a Boston police officer in Canton, in Can and the Canton police because they knew John O'Keefe, or. They, they or they have ties with people in 34 Fairview that it's it's inappropriate. It's a conflict of interest. So the Canton police cannot conduct this investigation. So the chief of police would have been the most inappropriate person to <laughs> to have gone and found randomly this piece of taillight. And the fact that he is not on duty, well, kind of makes it just as inappropriate for different reasons. So uh, I don't want to hear this. Like, you, dude, you're sitting here and you're like, oh, well, I think that he just wasn't happy with the investigation. He took it upon himself to go look. And no, bro. Like, of course, there's no reason to be happy with the investigation. There's absolutely no reason. But what what you don't seem to understand is that Berkowitz is one of the reasons why one would not be happy with the investigation. He's he's directly accountable. One of the many people that are directly accountable as to why it is not okay how this investigation has been been conducted. He's a factor in the wrongdoings of this investigation. Was hidden in the snow. Was visible and that's consistent with what rain. he says, which is sloppy investigation. No, not at all. Not sloppy. It was wet investigation, but not sloppy. Shouldn't you be digging through the snow to see what happened, looking for tire tracks? Bro, I got to hear that one more fucking time. What rain. he says, which is sloppy investigation. No, not at all. Not sloppy. It was wet investigation, but not sloppy. Shouldn't you be digging? Sloppy investigation. No, not at all. Not sloppy. It was wet investigation, but not sloppy. Shouldn't you be digging the investigation? No, not at all. Not sloppy. It was wet investigation, but not sloppy. Shouldn't you be? He said that shit out loud. This is an expert on court TV, not on a video panel, not on Zoom. He's sitting there in the studio and he said it was a wet investigation. Not sloppy. He said that shit with his whole chest. No, 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 no. It was a wet investigation. Not sloppy. Okay. It's got to be, it's got to be differentiated. Okay. It was a wet investigation, but not sloppy. Dude. Like. When this goes to trial, I'm going to have a hard time because I do think that there is a massive possibility that this could go to trial. The reason why I say that is because Judge Bev has not made a sound decision, in, in, in my opinion, this entire time. In the last two years, Judge Bev has not made a sound decision. At least not a sound decision that 
could be followed that 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 has any sound follow through. So I'm going to have mixed feelings. If and when this goes to trial, I'm going to have mixed feelings during this trial. Because I'm going to love watching Alan Jackson and David Yannetti destroy certain people on the stand. I'm just going to have a ball watching that. But I'm also going to have this thing looming over me the entire time. And that thing that is going to be looming over me in the, the entire time is going to be the fact that this should have never gone to trial. That it is a, a disgusting, gross waste of taxpayer money and resources. And a complete and utter farce of our justice system. And it makes me upset for the people of Massachusetts. Because make no mistake that this is what these people are out there protesting for. These are This is what these people are upset about. The ones that are showing up to the Canton Select Board meetings and speaking up, those people, what they are specifically upset about is the fact that this bullshit is even being entertained because of the elected officials and the appointed civil servants by those elected officials. So these people who show up to these Kansas Select Board meetings who who look forward to it and they prepare for what they're going to say in those three minutes that they have to speak their mind, these are the people who are speaking up for everyone in that community. All of the people holding signs, Wearing t-shirts. It's not just about freeing Karen Reed. It's not just about the information that Turtle Boy has brought forward to everyone. It's not about, it's not just about that. It's about why these things matter. And the why is that there is corruption in this community. And this community is sick of it. They're upset and they want change. Digging through the snow to see what happened, looking for tire tracks, Is looking there for the a, evidence. A here? snow exclusion for I'm it's sorry, a, we really would have gotten all that a, DNA, but the weather was terrible. But that day. it wasn't a sloppy that doesn't make I it love a sloppy guy. investigation. It means that they weren't able It makes it a sloppy investigation, dude. Like I love this guy. This guy, this guy interjects right here. I love it. Oh, not sloppy. It was wet investigation, but not sloppy. <laughs> Shouldn't you be digging through the snow to see what happened, looking for tire tracks, Is looking there for the a, evidence? A here? snow exclusion for? I'm it's sorry, a, we really would have gotten all that a, DNA, but the weather was terrible. But that it day. was. Is there now a snow exclusion? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Is there now a snow exclusion when it comes to collecting evidence? That's what that, that that's investigation called due to bad weather, guys. Ooh, looks like it's gonna be a nasty one. Guess somebody's gonna get away with murder. I mean, bro. <laughs> oh no, for sure. Yeah, I totally changed my mind. Like, no, I'll I'll be honest. Like when the thing first started, he was sitting there going. Mm -hmm when they were saying that the defense had a case. So I was like, oh, this guy's already made up his mind, probably hasn't done any fucking research, but <laughs> this guy has made the most sense out of any of the other attorneys that have been up there as experts talking about this case. So far, this guy in the blue, in the purple blazer is, is the one making the most sense out of anybody that I've heard on this panel.
wasn't a sloppy. That doesn't make it a sloppy investigation. It means that they weren't able to find what they were looking for, and he was concerned. So went by let, there. let me ask you this, and I don't know what the situation was. I don't know if the crime scene. Well, neither does the guy you're talking to, Vinny. Clearly, he doesn't know. Listen to what he just fucking said make it a sloppy investigation it means that they weren't able to find what they were looking for and he was concerned so went by let, there. Let me ask you that. they weren't able to find what they were looking for okay so i wonder if anybody filled him in on the red solo cups that were used that were provided by a neighbor in order to collect blood samples i wonder if he's aware of that would that fall under a sloppy investigation guy in the yellow tie would that be considered sloppy? Would blowing all the evidence around with a leaf blower, would that be considered sloppy? Would not taping off the scene, would that be considered sloppy? Would, uh, <laughs> shut up, Jerry. Um, would not knocking on the door and checking to see, doing a wellness check on the home, would that be considered a sloppy investigation? Not getting any statements immediately from anybody? <laughs> that wouldn't be considered sloppy? Just what? See this, and yeah. I don't know what the situation was. I don't know if the crime scene tape was still up or not, but it should have been if you're waiting for the snow to melt. Sure. Yeah. But could... <laughs> It's not hard to figure out how snow works. Even I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Should they have melted the snow themselves to uncover what was beneath? And what snow do you melt? Just where it is? Do you take it three foot radius? Do you do eight feet? This is a dead cop in Massachusetts. This is a do police murder case. Yeah. You, come on. You, are you pretty surprised? Hold on. What? Was, I don't know if the crime for it. He was concerned. So he went by let, there. let me ask you this. And I don't know what the situation was. I don't know if the crime scene tape was still up or not. But it should have been if you're waiting for the snow to melt. Sure. Yeah. But could, it, right. It's not hard to figure out how snow works. Even I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Should they have melted the snow themselves to uncover what was beneath? Uh, and what snow do you melt? Just where it is? Do you take it three foot radius? Do you do eight feet? This is a dead cop in Massachusetts. It's a police, police murder case. Stopped? Yeah. Dude, come on. You, you're pretty surprised they just to them what happened. And so they So you think they thought it was it was obvious? Um she's alleged to have said, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. So you take that, you take the evidence, you got some shards of glass here, you've got the injuries, and you think it's a pretty simple case oh. until it's not. Because yes. it's not simple anymore. Kimberly, have you ever seen this? You ever seen an accused cop killer walk into a courtroom to uh, cheers and love? I see the exact opposite. I see a room full of cops staring down the defendant. I've never seen supporters of an alleged cop killer. And it's a motions. different case. <laughs> this is a different no. case, folks. Oh. This is a different case, folks. This is a different case, folks. All right. Here we go, guys. Yeah, I know. I didn't know I if know. you knew would be on, but thank you for being here. And I agree with you that Marvin Harrison, I'd be very happy if they take it. If they do, if the Patriots, if the Patriots have identified a quarterback that they think will be their potential star for the next 10 years then that's the way to go but if they're not confident in that go with the sure thing and marvin harrison because they have too many other things that they need to pick up so i agree uh ha happy to see everybody all the regulars here we have Boy, and i'm always happy to see people that even have different that are respectful but have different ways of viewing this case like no. jeff williams um oh shit i'm sorry we'll be popping in too so thank you guys i appreciate it uh let's just see who else here we want to say hi to Lee Zaka is going to talk. Uh, she's asked a question about covering fallacies in logic. Uh, the fact is, I haven't. I took no, logic. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. I, it was one of those things that I was very good at and actually used to tutor other people in. But um, he used to tutor other people. <laughs> You serious? <laughs>
the actual specific form, you know, the rules of logic that you would take study in a textbook are not something that I promise you I will go into or could go into at this point unless I did a refresher course. Uh, but good to see everybody. Uh, let's we're going to try to keep this as fun and respectful and two sided as we can while still sticking to evidence and trusting in logic. I, I love it. I love that he says that shit out loud, bro. Like, I can't hate Le Plevin. Like, he's so fucking ridiculous. How do you fucking dislike this guy, bro? Like, he's too likable. Telling you. It's so much fun. Like, it's so much fun to me to hear him say shit like, we got to look at the evidence and think logically. To hear him say that shit out loud and just piss all over logic while he says that shit it's so much fun <laughs> it's so much fun which i do no so tonight's don't. episode is a difficult one because it may come at a personal cost i'm going to touch on a subject i'd really rather not sean's interview of joan it's risky for me to discuss it well it's risky for me to even say why it's risky this is one of those situations where either you know what you're looking at or you don't. And if you don't mind seeing anything, it might come in a class. So I'm going to try to just be fair to Joan, who was articulate and likable. So I'll be open to various interpretations of her words. I'll fill in some details about things I do know that you may not with confidence. But that's a great question. Do I really think he believes the BSC says? Um, no. No, I don't. No. I don't I don't think that he believes one word of it. None. Because you you're watching him fucking backtrack. Like it it it's it's happening slowly. He's trying to cushion his impact of when everything that he's been saying turns out to be bullshit. When it is when it becomes blatantly unig unignorable that that these people that he's been defending have been lying constantly because this is the this is the undeniable truth like you look at okay let's let's look at this let's look at I, I started thinking about this earlier today like Think I don't know shit about this Kate Peters person, right? I really don't. I don't know shit about her other than she seems incredibly obsessed with Turtle Boy, right? Now she's she she can no longer talk about Turtle Boy. She can no longer troll him. It, it seemed to have been her entire basis for her existence um, was to basically just try to destroy turtle boy um and now all of a sudden she has a a a an order to where she can no longer do so and she must be just like just she can't handle it it's it's it must be driving her fucking batty right so but what I find also very interesting is she also now has the same charges that Turtle Boy had, which was felony intimidation of witnesses, right? But see, what's really interesting about her is she is she's the spearhead of the Turtle Boy hate, right? She is the absolute spearhead of the Turtle Boy hate. Right. I, no, I know Tom CPU. I know. But what I'm saying is take this into consideration because this is very important. This is an observation I made earlier and I was just like, huh. She spearheads all of the turtle boy hate, right? And everybody, all of these same people and she spearheaded the whole hate campaign of he belongs in jail. He absolutely is a woman abuser and this and this and that and all this and the other, right? And she spearheads this whole thing. And now she gets charged. And I don't hear anyone on Twitter. And I'm serious. Maybe I'm missing it. 
but I'm not seeing anyone coming to her defense. See, Turtle Boy, when Turtle Boy got charged, he got basically martyred, right? The idea was to shut him down, shut him up, and shut him down, right? And so Turtle Boy has all of these people, right, coming to his defense. And he has a, a, a hell of a campaign of haters, right? A hell of a campaign of haters. And she spearheads this. She's the hero to these people, right? Supposedly. But nobody is nobody is speaking up on her behalf. Nobody is, is, is crowding around outside of the courthouse and saying, free Kate Peters. Nobody's doing this. Why is that? I have my theory as to why that is. Because these people, they know that Turtle Boy did not break the law. Well, he technically broke the law, but the law is bullshit. They know that he didn't do anything wrong. They know it for a fact. But this is what I'm saying is it's it's all in their actions. You have to use your eyes, people. Okay? It's all in their actions. Because you're not seeing any of these people crowding outside of the courthouse saying free Kate Peters or Kate Peter. I don't know if it's Peter or Peters. I don't know. I don't give a shit. Um, none of these people believe in this woman. None of them do. These are people proving to you through their actions Proving to you, proving to themselves, proving to each other that they are just empty souls who believe in jack shit. Nothing. They just look for things to hate on the internet. That is the absolute nucleus of their existence. This is what runs them. This is, this is the electricity that runs their being. It's, they just like to sh sit all on the internet and hate nothing else. And they're proving it with their actions. They believe in absolutely nothing. They don't believe in justice for John O'Keefe. Because Kate Peters would be a, 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 Example, a leader in this movement, like, oh, my God, Turtle Boy and everybody who is actually fighting for John O'Keefe, who are saying they are, oh, they're the worst people in the world, and they're masking and they're using John O'Keefe and his memory to justify their witness intimidation and their 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 angry mob mentality and their crazy behavior. They're, they're just using it. But we are the ones who really believe in John O'Keefe, yet I'm not seeing anybody. I'm not seeing anybody willing to put themselves or their names or anybody, any, 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 any reputation in the slightest bit of themselves on the line for Kate Peters. None of these people are crediting her for being this wonderful, amazing person who is doing the real work in fighting for justice for John O'Keefe. None of these people have someone who is follow that who, who who is setting an example as to none of these people are 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 following someone who who is setting this amazing example as to fighting for justice for John O'Keefe because it's not about John O'Keefe for them. Their actions are showing that it's not about John O'Keefe. They don't give a shit about John O'Keefe. They don't give a shit about his family. They don't give a shit about the McAlberts. They don't give a fuck about any of these people who they're claiming are innocent victims. Nobody is out there advocating for them. Nobody is out there, you know, praising Kate Peter or Peters or whatever the fuck. Nobody's out there doing that. 
because they don't actually believe in anything. They're just waiting for the next piece of 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 little morsel of feed that nurtures their hatred for Turtle Boy. It's fascinating. And all you have to do is just open your eyes, use them, and you can see this. You can absolutely see this. Nobody gives a fuck that Kate Peters is charged with the same shit that Turtle Boy is. Nobody gives a fuck. Nobody is accusing her of being uh, or, or accusing the Commonwealth of unjustly charging her. It's fascinating when you think about it. It's absolutely fascinating. All of these people are self-serving. Nobody's putting their own names on the line to, to speak up on her behalf. Nobody is. Think about that. And unless things are presented to me in a way that I'm confident in or I'm sure about, I don't tend to present them. And this is also one of those cases where it's best to maybe let the families voice things in their own ways on their own time. And I know that can be hard, but I, so I'll, 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 I'll get into this a little bit, but I don't want to really prejudice anybody too much. Uh, my preference, as you guys know, it's always been to focus on the evidence. And, but there is a legitimate phenomena here in, that interview yesterday that's something that's gonna that is a very human phenomenon that will come into cases like this and so we have to be aware of it uh, we all have different skill sets these are things these things are a combination <laughs> of talents we're born with and experiences that we've had now i have a very good sense of what i am and am not good at most things i'm not good at i can't fix a car or build a shed because of my line of work for 20 years in the bar industry, I was in the middle of a thousand fights, many more, and I'm pretty good at breaking them up, but I'm not a good fighter myself. I'm a shitty dancer. I never tried acting, but God, that would be a disaster. In Turtle Boy's interview with The Globe this week, he said he's a journalist and an entertainer. And those two things are in ways in conflict with each other, but in other ways, especially for a podcast journalist, they're linked together in a vital way because journalism is based on tips coming in. Don't let anyone. Okay. How, how is being a journalist and an entertainer like con conflicting with each other? I could be a journalist. If I was willing to put in the work that Turtle Boy does, I, I could be a journalist. And guess what? My personality would stay the same. I would still be up here making jokes, making you guys laugh, making myself laugh. That's, I mean, why would that change? The only thing that would change as far as me being a journalist goes, like it, the only thing that would change if I were to become a journalist is working harder. <laughs> that's literally it. Like, seriously, that's, that's it. Like, why would they conflict with each other? I would just have to, you know, I would have, more information that would come directly from my hard work. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's what's funny too. Yeah, Erica Walsh is making an excellent point. Journalists entertain through words. At the end of the day, why do you read the newspaper? Because it entertains you. Why do you watch the news? Because it entertains you. It doesn't mean that you enjoy Entertaining just means that it, it 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 occupies your time and you're content with how your time is being occupied. You are entertained. You are entertained. That's it. That's that's all entertained means. That you are content currently with the way you are occupying your time. That's it. So, Plevin, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, dude. Oh, my Ooh, God. That's 98% of it. And that's true with Turtle, true. That's true with Turtle, too. It's all about the tips that come in. And you have to decide 
you have to weigh those tips and and make your best decisions on them and that's where the journalism comes in is deciding what's no, a real tip bro. and what isn't but it's not like you don't weigh the tips dude okay somebody gives you a, a a tip you decide you vet it to find out if it's credible i'm not a journalist and i know this you vet it to find out if it's credible you investigate that's why turtle boy considers himself an investigative journalist because he will take something that someone brings to him and then he will vet the information, vet the source of the information. And then if it's credible, he'll look into it that much more. If the source of the information is credible, then he'll look at the information itself and determine how credible it is. And if it inspires him to write a story about it, then he'll write it. I'm assuming is how it works. But no, dude, like, <laughs> like, you don't just weigh, you don't weigh it, you know? Oh, well, I like this one better than I like this one. Blah, blah, blah. No, man, like, obviously, if it's something that pertains and it is important to whatever the fuck you're talking about, well, then, yeah. Like, if somebody comes to Turtle Boy with, oh, my God, you know, Somebody called my dog ugly. You know, Turtle Boy's, of course, he's going to weigh that as to something that he's not going to talk about. Because who gives a fuck about it? Not like he's out there or I'm out there, or most people are out there digging this stuff up themselves. There are some people that did. Kate would not call herself a journalist, but that's what she did in this case, is go out there and dig into this for her own reasons. But she did probably the closest thing to that kind of journalism that anybody has seen here. Well, Gretchen Voss, too, she did that. And she has the backing of a... She's, she's a standard journalist because she has the backing of The Globe and Boston Magazine. So, but the tips don't come in on these cases unless your audience is big enough. So that's where being an entertainer, an entertainer is so useful. Now, Aiden is entertaining to a lot of people. As I said, I know my strengths and weaknesses, and I'm no entertainer. Well, what I am good you know, at is Plevin, man. You know, if you took the time, if you actually, you know, were willing to fuck a Raggedy Ann doll on a live stream, well, then maybe people would find you more entertaining, Plevin. Give it a chance. It's your own fault, bro. Maybe if you just had the gumption and foresight to fuck a Raggedy Ann doll, then just maybe people would find you more entertaining, my man. Just saying. Analysis. Oh. Weighing of evidence. Thinking things through in an objective way. And this case has taught me that, as it turns out, a lot of people aren't so good at that. <laughs> aren't so good at that. Kyle V gifted 10 memberships. Oh, my goodness. Um, Let's see. Ooh, who is this? Uh, Pearl. Awesome. Pearl got a membership. I love it. Uh, Deed. Okay. I think I got that name right. Bobby Swain. Angela M. True Psych Ward. Sue 42, you're a poet and didn't know it, or you did know it. B Legend, Chrissy Twig, Sushi, Bob Weir. Congrats, guys. Congrats to all of you. I appreciate you so much, Kyle V. You are fantastic. We love you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Even people who are otherwise very intelligent. It's, I know it's going to rub a lot of people the wrong way. Even supporters when I say something like that. But I, I, I just, I'm too old to not be honest about things. And I'm just being honest. And what I really want is to encourage people to get better at weighing evidence a little more logically. That's all. That's a big goal for me here. In this case and in anything. That's been the theme of my show really all along. Now, I'm perfectly well aware. Hey, everybody. Like I said. What I just said is a turnoff to a lot of people. 
but I can't, it can't be avoided anymore because we're seeing too much poor weighing of evidence by good people in this case. Now, I am very happy that over the last several months, the core group here in chat that's developed are also people that are very... Oh, my God, dude. Like, do you really think that you're fooling anybody with this bullshit, bro? You're lying. And you're a piece of shit. <laughs> we're good at weighing things logically. So we support each other. And I'm incredibly grateful. And not only that, but relieved. Because it's encouraging to see that that's out there. So it's been a really good experience. Now, one of the things I've tried to get people to focus on is foundational evidence and essential logic. In the Delphi murders of Abby and Libby. Oh, my God, dude. Sorry, I was just getting the message. In the Delphi murders of Abby and Libby, the defendant's own words put him at the scene at exactly the time of the murders. He described several witnesses, and those witnesses described him there. The trail ends at the 700-foot Monon High Bridge, and at the other end is private property, so it's a dead end. Richard Allen was last seen by a witness. All right. Ten chance of the Bruins winning the Stanley Cup. There's only a one in 100 chance of them both winning this year. <laughs> now, you can apply <laughs> Plevin's math. We got Plevin math, y'all. Just the cases. If there's a say a one in 10 chance of Richard Allen being there on the trail at up till three 30 and no one sees him after two. And he doesn't see Abby and Libby who are minutes away from the bridge. Then there's a one in 10 chance. That's being generous that Richard's oh. confession to his wife. Oh. So if you have a one in 10 chance oh. of Richard oh. Allen being on the trail after two and nobody's seeing him or him not seeing the girls, let's call that a one in 10 chance of him being, there being an innocent explanation. Oh. And also a one in ten chance for there being an innocent explanation for his false confession. So that you multiply them together. So for both of those things to happen and create innocence, that's a one in a hundred chance just by the multiplying together. So, and that's before we get to the other evidence in the Where case. Where do you get these fucking idiots, huh? The Where do you get shell them? that's found with the girls that matches to his gun, you know, and whatever other evidence will come out in trial. So you, these things, if something is. If you can just the idea is if something is very improbable, but not super improbable, if you have a, several of these things, you you multiply them together, and then the thing becomes super improbable. <laughs> so in the Karen Reed case, there are a lot of these kind of things. Odds are very <laughs> so so Plevin math, guys. If you if you take all the things that are improbable and then multiply them you'll get something that's even more improbable. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, buddy. So how did you like uh, that? I loved it. I want to ride that horse again sometime. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Very much against evidence being planted because there was really no opportunity to tamper with the taillight or to bury it in the snow without being seen. Again, people always get confused and think that I'm on the side of the cops um, or I just trust in cops. This is a big part of this case here, and we'll see this in the interview with Joan, is that a lot of it is just based on people. Having Nobody a, thinks that. A, a very Nobody thinks that you're just blindly on the side of cops, dude. No, nobody thinks that. We think that you are just talking – out of your ass in order to be the opposition of people that you dislike. That's what we're accusing you of. We're not accusing you of being just blindly pro cop. Nobody's accusing you of that. Hell, I wouldn't even shit on you for that. You know, I, I get that. There's a lot of people who feel that way in your community. I get that. Um, and I feel bad for them, you know, but, but it, it comes from an innocent place. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to shit on anybody for that. We're shitting on you because you're out. You're you you you're, you're, you just talk out of your ass, and it's coming from a place of hating someone. Profound mistrust of authority or of the police. Now, a lot of times I'm with them, right? Because it's nothing anti-police. It's more just I believe that there's a lot of corruption in the world, and human beings are capable of a lot of corruption. And I've seen a lot of corruption. In my life, when I own the bar, and I've also seen, uh, read, you know, I've, I'm, I'm a news hound, so I've followed a lot of corruption that have gone on 
with the FBI, the state police, local police. It's just part of life. It doesn't mean that every case involves corruption, though. And I can nobody's also say that in that. my time. I Dude, nobody's saying nobody's fucking saying that every case involves corruption. The fuck are you talking about? I'm not saying that. Hell, I had to I I was really, really careful of that because I I was going into this going no way. I was going into this going, there's no way. You people you got this dude turtle boy out here talking about corruption. I'm not, I don't even want to hear that shit yet. I just want to look at the evidence that's made available to us. That's all I want to look at. You know, I wasn't even thinking corruption. I didn't even want to hear fucking the word corruption yet. But when you look at every single bit of inconsistency in this case, it's it's impossible to ignore. It's impossible to ignore. There's so many discrepancies that you have to suspect corruption because nobody's that stupid. I refuse to believe that there are so many civil servants and elected officials who work in concert to be absolutely stupid. There's no way. There has to be corruption. People with higher educations than me doing things that are blatantly dumb in concert together. It's it's insane. That's that's got to be corruption. But it took me a while to get there, you know? I didn't just automatically just start thinking that shit. As a bar owner, as a bartender, uh, I worked with and dealt personally with a lot of cops. And the overwhelming majority of them were the kind of people you want to live next to, the kind of people you want to babysit your kids, sure. uh, coach your kids' little team, literally. Sure. Team. I mean, most of these guys were just... Here's what I think. Listen, until I feel otherwise... I don't think that there's like when you when 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 I hear someone like Brian Higgins track record my automatic instinct is to go okay and still give him somewhat of the benefit of the doubt. So far the only thing that I'll say negative about Brian Higgins is that he's a liar. That's what I'll say. I don't know what his role was in 34 Fairview on the early morning hours of the 29th. I don't know what his role was. I don't know what his role was in the cover-up. I don't know. All I know is that he lied to the grand jury. All I know is that this guy is full of shit when he talks about butt dialing. That's all I know. I'm not going to sit here and act like, okay, well, this guy did this and he did that. And all I know is the guy's a fucking liar. That's it. So I'm not going to sit here and call the guy a cop killer because I don't fucking know. Now, I won't even go as far as to use the words cop killer to describe Jen McCabe. Like Turtle Boy will. And his reasons for doing so are sound. I just won't go that far. Me personally, I won't go that far. But if somebody were to like be like, well, you defend Turtle Boy for him saying it. Well, yeah, I do. Because, I mean, that's a perfectly sound opinion to have. If you if you Googled how long to die in cold at 2.27 a.m., that tells me that you were allowing and you were, com you were complicit in allowing this police officer to die and freeze to death on that property. Absolutely. And that's that's what's crazy is is I I <laughs> I can't even I I just won't bring myself to say those words about Jen McCabe. I just won't do it. I will call her a fucking liar, absolutely. And I do believe that she absolutely Googled two twenty at two twenty seven a.m. How long to die in cold? I absolutely believe that. Yet for some reason, I won't bring myself to say those words. Because it just makes me uncomfortable. That's really my only logical. That's that's uh, that's that's my only honest 
response to that. Why won't you call her a cop killer? Well, just because I, it bothers me to say those words. Because I still don't know what happened that night. But it's perfectly fair. <laughs> it's perfectly fair to call her a cop killer, in my opinion. I mean, it's perfectly care. It's perfectly fair. I just, for some reason, I won't bring myself to do it. And I know that sounds fucking crazy and stupid. But it's just certain things that I feel comfortable saying out loud and labeling someone. Like, when it comes to accusations, I need, I need proof and then some. <laughs> you know what I mean? I need proof and then some. So far with Jen McCabe, all I got is the proof. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, 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 I don't know what happened that night. All I know is she got home. She got home and her Apple Health or whatever it was counted her steps at like an average of like 33 steps per minute. And some say, okay, well, she was pacing. She was pacing right before she Googled how long to die in the cold. I don't know if she was pacing. I don't fucking know. All I know is that she had that many steps. And so, I mean, she could have just gone to the, she could have been perfectly calm. She could have gone to the fridge and grabbed something to eat and grabbed a, walked over to the other side of the kitchen, grabbed a dish walked over to another part of the kitchen to grab a utensil. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I need exact details for me to feel comfortable to, to just spew out words like that. But that's just my personality. You know what I mean? But the thing is, man, like, you take a guy like Brian Higgins and you take his track record, you take his career record, and that's that demands at least some level of respect, right? So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But if you're going to say, hey, it's wrong to call him a liar, well, no, fuck you. It's not wrong to call him a liar because he admitted to lying to the grand jury. He admitted that he was a liar. So to me, that's proof and then some. He's caught on the lie and then he admits it. That's proof and then some. That Brian Higgins is a liar. So I feel perfectly comfortable calling him a liar. But I don't know what role he had in, 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 in what happened to John O'Keefe. I have no idea. All I know is this, there's some shady shit going on as far as the communications between him and the Alberts. Some shady, shady shit. I, you know, they're, not, they're, they're flawed people like all human beings, but we're generally a, a little bit of a cut above your regular person. I mean, they, they were good people. So that was my experience now. That, that, but it's, sure. a, it's a, when, the one time you experience corruption with an officer. I mean, nobody, I'm, uh, you're, you're, you're talking like, you see the, 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 the manipulation tactic here because he thinks that he's he's sitting here basically painting a picture that the rest of us who think that Karen Reed is innocent hate cops and we think that they're all corrupt no no I'm sure that all of the police that he's interacted with are good people I'm sure the majority of law enforcement officers who have taken an oath are good men and women who genuinely want to make a difference. Hell, I'll even say that even some of the people who might have their hand in the cookie jar to some degree, if it's victimless, you know, I'm not going to say that it's okay, but I'm going to say, well, you know, like, I understand. I don't know what their situation is at home. You know what I mean? Like, who knows? 
they might still be good people who are making bad decisions. But the thing is, is you don't get to cherry pick which corruption is 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 more severe than the next. Because if you got everybody who's and there's this there's this underlined understanding in the community in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that it's okay to have your hand in the cookie jar. Well, then you got a whole bunch of people who are not going to be able to do the right thing when the time comes. A whole bunch of people who are just going to watch each other's back because they all got skin in the game and something to lose. So even those good people who aren't greedy but probably made a bad decision because they needed to put food on the table. Who knows what the situation was? I'm not I'm not excusing it. What I'm saying is then you have that person who's a good person, but for some reason feels like they have way too much to lose to be able to speak up about something that they know what went terribly wrong when it comes to something as serious as the death of a police officer. And I think that the Alberts hold, a, they, they, they draw a lot of water to some degree. You, you have Chris Albert on the, on, on the select board, you have Brian Albert and you have Kevin Albert, who's on the, um, the Canton police department. And you have these people who have a lot of influence in this town. And it just makes sense that people would be afraid to speak up against them. Not one subpoena was issued to get ring cameras from any of the neighbors around 34 Fairview. Nobody finds that weird or suspicious. Nobody thinks that's strange. Not one subpoena. Why is that? Why were there no subpoenas issued to access ring ring cameras from any of the neighbors? So you see what I'm saying? Like this this corruption thing is it's it's a lot more complicated than just black and white. You know, it's a lot more complicated than just good cops who are going to uh, who, who, who have the, the choice to do the right thing versus the wrong thing. That shit doesn't have anything to do with anything, though. Ring, ring cameras are paid subscriptions only 90 days. They store it. Um, I, no, I, I, I'm, yeah, I call bullshit on that. See, that's the thing is, how is that? How is that even supposed to be an excuse? That's that's canvassing 101. That's day one canvassing right there. There's a dead cop in a lawn within, at the very least, 24 hours. At least within the first 24 hours, you should have officers going around canvassing the neighborhood and asking people for their ring camera footage. And for those who are saying, nope, you can't have it, well, get subpoenas because there is that expiration. So if there's that 90 day window, there's no reason why it should take 90 days to get a subpoena for that ring camera footage. There's no reason for it. If you're trying to get justice for a fallen police officer, it should have happened immediately. That's the entire point is so much of this evidence was collected or, or stored. I mean, logged in documented. We're talking so, some of this stuff after a year and a half, after a year and a half, 
So, I mean, I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> I don't want to hear that shit. Yeah, no, I get you. I, I mean, I'm saying it, it's it, it's it's ridiculous. Why didn't they do this when if if they were trying to get justice for a fallen police officer and they were trying to get to the bottom of what actually happened and they were actually trying to prosecute the person, they would have absolutely gone and gotten that evidence. They would have done everything they could to get that evidence in a timely fashion. If they believed at as early as they did that. Karen Reed was absolutely responsible for the death of John O'Keefe. Well, then they should have set out to get that video footage. Why didn't they do that? It's the first thing you do. You canvas and you ask for ring camera footage. And if they don't, if they if they say, nope, you can't have it, fuck you. Well, then you get a subpoena. Or, or, a, or an officer that that bullies you or something like that, and I've witnessed it and I've experienced it. It really sticks. It really sticks. You, you never forget it. It's a really difficult thing to go through because you feel exposed. You're you're powerless against something like that. So it's a very difficult thing to get out of your system. Uh, but that's why, in a case though, you want to focus on evidence. And so for me, looking at the tail light, it's not that I say a trooper couldn't ever plant evidence of course they do and they have it's i look at in this specific case whether there was an opportunity to tamper with the taillight and whether there was an opportunity to plant the evidence and once by the end of the summer i had pieced together that there was almost no opportunity or very very limited opportunity to do that here it, it became something that was very very unlikely it had nothing to do i don't know the police involved i don't you know i don't know the investigators uh, i'm not defending them I'm just applying the logic of it. And there was no access to Karen's message. You, you see how he's singing a real different tune. <laughs> like, I wonder how much different this tune is going to change after Tuesday. Like, once Tuesday happens, and I, I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> I wonder what's going to take place at the hearing on Tuesday. And then how how's Plevin going to be... Uh, what 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 tune is he going to be singing? SUV. Until after it was towed. And that was 16 hours after the crime. That's a long time, especially in this day and age in a world with everybody's got cameras on their phone and there's video cameras everywhere. So it, then it, to get it to the scene in front of all those other troopers and the news crews and bury it. Right. Very difficult to do. Impossible? No. I mean, and there's all this. I mean, yeah. Levin, here you are talking about pay attention to the evidence. You're missing the biggest point here. There's so much evidence missing. You're not using your eyes, Plevin. And I think you are. You're, you're just not. You expect us to believe that you're not. You want to play ignorant. You want to play dumb. When the time comes, when, when the time comes that either Karen Reed's charges are dismissed and members of the Norfolk County DA's office are sanctioned when that time comes or this goes to trial and Karen Reed is acquitted inevitably if it does go to trial. I mean, what are you going to expect us to believe coming from you? Because it sounds like there's a lot of backpedaling going on here. No, no, he's playing dumb. He knows. He fucking knows. He's just, he's willfully ignorant. And he's he's trying to convince us all. He thinks that we're all stupid and blind. But see, Plevin, he has to be able to see the fact that the issue is He's sitting here talking about looking at the evidence, the evidence, the evidence. No, what you're missing is the lack of the evidence and the lack of the substance behind the evidence that you're claiming is, is supposedly solid. You're ignoring all of this. If I could sit here and poke a hole through every single thing that you tell me, 
And I could do it with a simple explanation of chain of custody. Simple. Chain of custody. I mean, the taillight, I, I don't give a fuck. You, you, you could sit here all fucking day long and you could, you could pick apart everything that Sean McDonough says about the taillight. You could pick apart every single fucking thing that Sean McDonough says about the taillight. It doesn't mean shit to me. It doesn't matter. Like, let's just say that Sean McDonough is wrong, right? Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, that Sean McDonough is fucking wrong. It still doesn't matter due to the fucking chain of custody of this evidence. There's too much that creates doubt when it comes to this taillight. Simply because there were five undocumented searches. Five undocumented searches that took place. That is a chain of custody issue. That right there creates doubt. Because I could sit here. It doesn't matter. I don't have to prove. If I am Karen Reed's defense, I don't have to prove. At the end of the day, I don't have to prove that Proctor planted that evidence. I just have to make the jury think that it was possible. And it's real easy to do. It's real easy to do when something as suspicious takes place, such as Berkowitz finding a piece of this evidence. Let me do it in order, okay? Such as them not finding any red pieces of taillight in the snow, yet they found clear pieces of glass the very first night. Then, on top of that, you have days later, after the, the snow melts, the chief of the Canton Police Department just happens to be driving by after he's had phone calls with both Higgins and Brian Albert. So he's driving by, and he just happens upon a piece of a taillight, which doesn't happen. Because everybody drives by a piece of fucking taillight. Anybody who's driving their car down a fucking street, God knows how many streets they drive down, chances are one of those streets is going to have a piece of fucking taillight laying in it. This guy just happened by 34 Fairview and saw a piece of taillight and went, ooh, that's probably evidence. He didn't call anybody up. He just found it. Found it and was like, oh, hey, <laughs> Hey, hey, it's my lucky day. Oh, That's not how shit goes down, dude. That's not how evidence is collected. So you've got this shifty motherfucker who's no longer the chief of police in Canton, who has this communication with people who were inside 34 Fairview that night, and then he happens upon this piece of taillight, and then after this... After Berkowitz finds this piece of taillight magically, then there's five undocumented searches where Proctor finds 37 pieces. 37 pieces that were missed this entire time. Magically just, just overlooked. Like, what? Oops. Just like John O'Keefe's six-foot-four body. So, I mean, let's just get real here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter whether or not Sean McDonough is correct about the taillight. Doesn't matter. What matters is once this goes to trial, if this does go to trial, what will happen is, is you, there is nothing but doubt when it comes to this taillight due to the chain of custody why didn't proctor meticulously document every finding of any piece of evidence why didn't he do that a taillight is 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 nothing once the jury hears the defense 
<laughs> ask questions. Once Proctor's sitting on a stand and a jury is listening, and Alan Jackson gets a hold of Proctor in front of a jury, that tail light is going to mean dick. So again, the defense doesn't have to prove that the taillight was planted. They just have to prove that it's possible. They have to prove that anything could have happened during the period of time of John O'Keefe's death and when that when those pieces of taillight were logged into evidence. And there's this whole window of time in between where anything could have happened with that taillight. Anybody could have handled it. Anybody could have broke it. Anybody could have put it somewhere. Anybody could have laid it on the grass. Anybody could have done God knows what. You could have put the taillight on a plane and went sightseeing with it. Put it in a baby stroller and walked it around New York City. And then taking it back to Boston and dump the pieces of taillight, abandoned it, abandoned your baby taillight all over the all over the fucking lawn. Anything could have happened with that taillight. Anything. I mean, but very very difficult to do. And then, but then you look at other elements, and these become things that are also very improbable, and you can multiply them together. So in addition to the difficulty in planting evidence, microscopic taillight pieces were were found on John's clothes. Oh, that must be exhausting. Would, would a trooper even think of that? Who would think of that, right? It would have been something they would have had to think of much later. And so now you're talking about, again, access to that evidence that's sealed up, right? Now, again, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's probably unlikely, right? There's a reason that these systems are in place um, to even know how to plant. Okay. Unlikely is enough with doubt. There's enough doubt in unlikely. That's you you you're missing this whole thing here dude. Like it doesn't matter how unlikely it is. If the prosecution were to stand up there and go ladies and gentlemen of the jury did Proctor plant these pieces of tail light? It's not impossible. But it's highly unlikely. Like the jury's going to go, what? How's that proof? What? Think about that. Think about that. It is not impossible that this man Trooper Michael Proctor of the Massachusetts State Police Department. Is it impossible that he planted these pieces of taillight? No, it's not impossible, but it's unlikely. Therefore, you must convict Karen Reed. What? That wouldn't... <laughs> that's insane. It doesn't matter. Like, it actually does matter. It matters. If it's unlikely, that right there is doubt. That's that, that, that contains doubt. It has to be impossible. Okay? It has to be impossible that Michael Proctor planted that those pieces of taillight. And due to the fact that this dude didn't think it was important to log his searches and log his findings in a timely fashion... Well, then, there's all kinds of possibilities. There's all kinds of possibilities. There's an infinite amount of possibilities. And that right there is doubt. Microscopic evidence. Is someone going around with test tubes of, or vials of microscopic daylight pieces? I mean, again, not impossible, but unlikely. So if you think that the opportunity for planting daylight evidence if you, if you think of the opportunity of tampering and planting taillight evidence is, let's be generous to the conspiracy theory and say it's one in 10. I mean, that's about as generous as, as I think okay. it can be. Let's but then if it's also... Let's talk about the microscopic pieces of taillight in John O'Keefe's clothes. Again, John O'Keefe's clothing that was 
that there are pictures of laying on the hospital floor while John O'Keefe was just about to be declared deceased officially, right? So from the moment that John O'Keefe was declared deceased officially and those pictures of his clothing where they found microscopic pieces of, 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 of taillight, supposedly, right? Well, his clothing wasn't logged into evidence for three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks between the, the picture that was taken of John O'Keefe's clothing laying on the hospital floor, not in a bag, not, not in a bag that was logged, that was labeled, nothing. Nothing, just laying on the floor. Collecting contamination of God knows what, right? And then three weeks later, his clothing is logged into evidence. Three weeks. And so if I'm a juror, I'm supposed to think that microscopic pieces of taillight being in there after it's already been planted in my mind that that the lead investigator possibly planted the evidence. I'm not going to invest anything in that clothing. I don't give a fuck what you found microscopic pieces of in it. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you found in it. Because there's a three-week window of anything that could have happened in that fucking clothing. There's a three-week window. People. So, again, let's be generous that there's only a one in five chance that microscopic taillight pieces were planted on John's clothing. So now you're talking the one in 10 times the one in five means a one in 50 chance of there being a, being a conspiracy. And each one of these things that you look at that are improbable, they multiply. So, I mean, and, there's a, and a lot of these things really start to add up in here. And it's the same thing when you look at the idea of Bro. John going inside the house. They multiply. You know, to conclude that John could have gone inside the house, you have to believe that the GPS is somehow wrong, the most, uh, the most accurate location data in existence, or you have to maybe believe that John dropped his phone and went inside the house without it, then was attacked, and then was deposited on the lawn on top of his phone. Now, it's not impossible, right? But it's a little bit absurd, right? So it's going to be certainly very unlikely. Then you get to the fact that 11 people inside testified they never saw John come into the house. In the truck outside, Ryan Nagel never saw him walking out the driveway. Now, after learning all that, it kind of takes an act of will, maybe even I would say faith, to believe John went inside the house. You have to be unbothered by the absurdity of a plot that has the killers depositing John on their own lawn, not near the street, but 12 feet onto the lawn, close to the neighbors, close enough where they could have just a few feet over, put him on the neighbor's lawn, but nope, on their own lawn. Now, here's the thing, man, is... He's got me there, okay? We don't have an actual motive. Not, I mean, not a not a solid motive. There's motive theory for sure. Like even Colin Albert, that's a motive theory, right? And Brian Higgins, motive theory. But here's the thing is I wonder, because I think the strongest motive is is Brian Higgins because supposedly there's all these text messages. The prosecution claims that there's all these text messages between Karen Reed and Brian Higgins that were of a romantic nature or a sexual nature or something. Something consisting of those things are somewhere in between, right? Now, supposedly there's that. There's 50 some odd pages of it. Right. And then supposedly there was a get together at John and Karen's and Higgins was there. And then she allegedly walked him outside and then kissed him. Right. This supposedly happened. All right. Let's just say for argument's sake, it did happen. Right. Let's just say for argument's sake that that actually happened that there actually was some sort of intimate uh, dynamic between Karen Reed and Brian Higgins. So not only does that create motive, 
technically for both Karen Reed and Brian Higgins, but the the the, the motive for Karen Reed is is weak. You know, she's going to kill her cop boyfriend so that she can flirt freely with this guy. Like, because apparently it's just a flirting thing, right? So, I mean, it, it, it doesn't add up. Why? Because she got drunk and she said, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. So, I don't know. I, I don't buy it. But then, let's just say all this is true, right? And then you've got Brian Higgins. Let's just say Brian Higgins had nothing to do with John O'Keefe's death. Let's say John O'Keefe went inside the house, but knowing what we know about Brian Higgins and Karen Reed, again, hypothetically speaking, that it's all true, assuming that it's all true, if I'm investigating this new revamped investigation into John O'Keefe and I want Higgins to talk and cooperate, well, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to sit him down and I'm going to be like, hey, that's going to be my that's going to be my method of breaking this guy down. I'm going to be like, well. The federal investigation says. That Jen McCabe made this Google search at 2.27 a.m. The federal investigation also indicates that um, Karen Reed's car hitting him is inconsistent with his injuries. So that's out the window. We know Karen Reed didn't hit him with the car. So, but we know that he went, in, if, if, if she didn't hit him with the car, that means that he went inside that house. And the only person that really has motive, the strongest motive, is you. That's how I would approach Brian Higgins. I would be like, you're the one that we're going to be looking into the most. You had the motive. You wanted John O'Keefe out of the way so that you and Karen Reed could live happily ever after. Right? That's what I would do. That's exactly what I would do. Because I don't think... I don't think Higgins did anything. I don't think he did. But that's how I'd get him to talk. I'd be like, we're looking at you. The community wants justice, man. <laughs> the community wants justice. And you would be the easiest person to convict in this whole fucking thing. So you better start talking and telling me exactly what happened that night. What did you guys talk about afterwards? Start singing. Start telling me everything. Because this is not a good look for you, my friend. It's not going to be difficult. <laughs> the people want justice. And it's not going to be difficult for me to tear you apart in a courtroom. You had the motive. You had the means. Simple. But we're just fantasizing here. Again, we don't know what the hell happened inside that. All we know is Brian Higgins and the Alberts have lied. They lied to a grand jury. Both Brian Albert and Brian Higgins both lied to a federal grand jury. We know this for a fact. And he's alive, where he might have been saved and been able to tell the police what happened. So now, and what is, to me, an ironic twist, despite their best efforts, and I think improper efforts, to help the defense, feds have now strengthened the already airtight case against Karen because they left no stone unturned. They looked at all the relevant messages they have the kind of intrusive power that the state and the defense can only dream of. Debate. They no doubt looked at plenty of data themselves, such as geofence and the GPS. They interrogated witnesses, interrogated them before a federal grand jury, and they found no cover-up. And it's not reasonable at this point to conclude anything else. Not only did the prosecution and the defense, but the judge has now read the report from the feds, looked at all the evidence they submitted. And all we hear about are butt dials and non-butt dials. Yeah, we do hear a claim maybe about 227, but we haven't seen the report. And Jackson is known for distorting these kind of things. I mean, first of all, it wasn't Jackson who talked about the butt dials. It was Yanetti, had you been paying attention. Um, but don't dismiss the butt dials like they don't matter. The butt dials, even though they're funny, sure. <laughs> there's there's humor in the butt dials. That's why I put up those the 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 the, the challenge for the for the memes, right? 
They're funny. The the butt dial aspect of this is funny. And the but the reason why it's funny is because it's so fucking ridiculous that a bunch of fucking cops thought it would be the the right thing to, the the right way to go to just come up with the the mutual butt dialing story. Let's all let's all just agree that it was all butt dialing, right? Butt dial, butt dial, butt dial. What do, what do we tell them when they ask what we talked about? Oh, we didn't talk about anything. It was a butt dial. How are they going to prove otherwise? It's like as if this is another thing. Again, you got to use your eyes, people. These people are settling on a butt dial story. And all of these people are claiming the butt dial story to be the truth. Right? What that tells me is these people are lying. And they're they're blatantly saying, we're, we're not going to tell you shit. Because they know that the butt dial story isn't believable. But they also know it's not what you know, it's what you can prove. We know that the butt dial story is bullshit. But there's no way to prove what was said during those phone calls. There's no way to prove it. They'd have to admit to it. They'd have to, they'd have they, they would have to confess. There'd have to be a confession. So if every single person is sticking to the butt dial story, what they're telling everyone is, yeah, there's something that we talked about, but we're not going to tell you. Prove it. Charge me with something. You have nothing. Charge me with something. That's what they're doing. Charge me or get the fuck out of my face. Yeah, I'll give you something. We I butt dialed the person. And prove that I didn't. Yeah. I was fucking my wife and I butt dialed this person. Prove me wrong. Prove that I didn't. That's the message. You know, remember his non-human hairs, which was no, which was a ruse, and the non-existent library gap. So we don't really know what's in that report that the feds have. We do know that the guy who wrote the software for Celebrate, a European company, is is going to testify testify for the prosecution, and he's made clear that timestamp is not accurate. Now, do we know for sure the feds found no cover-up? Well, they've told the attorneys of Brian Albert, Kevin Albert, Brian Higgins, and Chief Berkowitz that their clients are not targets. The U.S. attorney could have said no comment. We're doing we're just no comment during this because we're in the middle of an investigation. They didn't. Instead, they actually gave the lawyers permission to tell the court that they were not a target, that those people were not targets. That's incredibly indecisively powerful. To cling to the idea that the feds are going to come to the rescue here is now kind of like hoping the 2023 Patriots might still make the playoffs. It's time to give that dream up. It's not rational. It speaks more of a need to believe in something or in some cases to keep the grift going. Now, are there odd things about butt dials and hugs and gifts? But there are always odd things in every case. If you have the power to look deep enough, you'll find them. Richard Allen's defense in Delphi has identified quite a few in that one. But it doesn't change the core evidence. Same with the 2023 Patriots. The record is now what it is, and it can't be changed. Now, I want to get to a delicate subject, Sean's interview with Joan. Um, I'm going to play it, but not all of it. I, I will have to play some of it at high speed. I've jumped around. I've marked some points. This is on Sean McDonald's channel through the motions. If you want to see the entire interview, it was recorded, filmed live a couple of days ago. All right, so just to be sure... I'm not, I'm only going to give an incomplete understanding. All right. Of it. So I have to hear that one more time because <laughs> that dream up. It's not rational. Like, Cyrus doing right. We know for sure the feds found no cover up. Well, they told the attorneys of Brian Albert, Kevin Albert, Brian Higgins, and Chief Berkowitz that their clients are not targets. The U.S. attorney could have said no comment. We're doing it. We're just no comment during this because we're client, no cover up. Well, they've told the attorneys of Brian Albert, Kevin Albert, Brian Higgins, and Chief Berkowitz that their clients are not targets. Okay. Every name that he just dropped. Because again, this is really, really fun to me. Every name that he just dropped, who their clients or their attorneys, have said that they are not targets of this federal investigation. And that proves that there is no cover up and we need to just give this dream up because the fact that they are not targets of this federal investigation 
all of a sudden just exonerates them from a cover up is bullshit. And the reason why this is Plevin is because this the federal investigation is not investigating John O'Keefe's death. That is not what this federal investigation is about. The federal investigation is still the investigation of John O'Keefe's death. So none of the people that were named were part of the investigation. The target of the federal investigation, the targets would be people who are involved in the investigation into the death of John O'Keefe, not the death of John O'Keefe itself. They're not investigating John O'Keefe's death. They're investigating how the investigation into John O'Keefe's death was conducted. Therefore, those people who were not targets, they wouldn't be targets. Why would they be targets? Berkowitz is not an active law enforcement. He, he, he's, he's retired. Why would he be a target? Why would Brian Albert be a target of this investigation when he's also retired? Why would Kevin Albert be a target of this investigation when he works for Canton PD, who is not investigating the John O'Keefe death? Why would Higgins be a target of the federal investigation when he was not part of the investigation either? He was just part of the house. He was inside the house at 34 Fairview. Because you were inside the house of 34 Fairview, you would not be targets of this particular federal investigation. And I don't believe that it'll be a federal investigation when they when they revamp the the, the, the investigation into John O'Keefe. I don't believe that it'll still be a federal investigation. I don't think that the feds are going to step in on that. The feds are merely going to share their findings with the Massachusetts State Police once they start handing out the reprimands to the people who were handling the investigation. Once Proctor's out of the way, whether he is suspended, whether he's fired, whether he's fired and indicted, whatever. Once those key players who were actually charged with the responsibility of getting justice for John O'Keefe, once those people are, are ejected from the equation, as far as the investigation goes to getting to the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe, once those people are out of the way, then new people, qualified people, vetted Massachusetts State Police investigators will be put to the case, hopefully. And when they are, then we're, we'll start to see charges into those people who were inside the house. So... You're sitting here and you're acting like there's this big win that took place because these attorneys stood up there and said, well, my client is not the target of this federal investigation. There's no reason why they would be. There's no reason why they would be. They were not part of the investigation. They are not investigating the death of John O'Keefe. They are investigating how the investigation into John O'Keefe's death was conducted. So your little celebration dance is quite premature. It's quite premature. So, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> there's no reason why those men would be targets of the federal investigation. But I guarantee you their findings will be applied when they are finally actually conducting a sound investigation to get John O'Keefe justice, the findings of this federal investigation will absolutely be applied in the efforts towards getting John O'Keefe justice ultimately. Guaranteed. I mean, yeah. Like, Plevin's so full of shit that it, it just doesn't even matter. Like, it doesn't even matter. Like, you even look at the people who listen to him, you know? Like, they're idiots too. 
anybody who invests in anything that Kevin says is some sort of insightful pieces of 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 <laughs> some sort of insightful pieces of 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 intellect. Like there there there's nothing tangible about anything that Plevin says, and the people who sit here and listen to him and act like what he's saying is some sort of you know. It's it's ridiculous. It, it's there's those people are just dumb, willfully ignorant idiots who choose to just ignore logic and evidence. Like I love that. That it's just good enough to just be like, oh, okay, wow, man. Because these are the kind of people that we're we're dealing with. We're dealing with the type of people who feel like it's a bombshell. That microscopic pieces of tail light were found in John O'Keefe's clothing. They're like, holy shit, that's crazy. Microscopic pieces of tail light in John O'Keefe's clothing. That's it. That's it. Case closed. Tara Reed is going to prison. Right? But these are the same people who will ignore the fact. That, that that clothing was not logged into evidence for three weeks. And they will ignore that this is wrong, that this is insane, that this is the an insane mistake to make in the investigation to find out what happened to a fallen police officer. It's 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 insane. It's madness. And then th these are people who will just ignore the fact that, again, that is just a drop in the bucket of evidence that is just tagged, that's just completely and totally fucked. The entire case against Karen Reed is a farce. The entire case, the entire case that the prosecution is bringing to the court against Karen Reed is a farce farce it is shocking that beverly canone is even considering going to trial with this and you listen to her she's like she's she doesn't even know she doesn't even she didn't even realize that kevin albert was part of this case was a witness. She didn't even realize that Kevin Albert was a witness. Like, you know, he looked at her like, yo, are, are you good? Where have you been? We've been talking about this this entire time. Where have you been? No, this is the craziest thing, Tom CPU. I you're, you're saying this is this is historic. We get to watch these bad people go to jail. Do we though? Because I still don't have a hundred percent faith in that. I really don't. Like with everything that I'm seeing, as unreal as it seems, I I, I I'm not sitting here going, oh, all these people are going to jail. They should. <laughs> they. They, they absolutely fucking should go to jail. But. Sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Oh my God. Yeah, I don't have 100% faith that justice will be served. I still don't have 100% faith that John O'Keefe will get justice. There's too much, I mean, there's there's a major lack of evidence now because of how this investigation was conducted. There's been no effort to find out who owns that Ford Edge. There's been no effort to find the Ford Edge. This case is not about getting to the truth. And because so much time has passed, because so much evidence has been lost.
I mean, I, 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 I'm not a hundred percent confident that John O'Keefe will ever get justice, but I sure hope so. And I'm here for it. I'm here for every bit of it. But I am going to wrap this up, guys. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me so late at night. Uh, I uh, will try to go live again tomorrow. If I don't, I don't know. But uh, I'll definitely be streaming the trial Tuesday morning. Um, I have it all set up to do that. Now, uh, I don't know um, if uh, if Turtle Boy still wants to do what we've been doing. Uh, I'm down for that, too. Uh, I don't mind postponing my live stream just uh, to go over uh, the hearing uh, like I always do. Um, but uh, either way, uh, whether I'm here or whether I'm over there, I plan on absolutely hanging out with you guys uh, as far as the uh, the hearing goes. So, guys, I appreciate you. You guys are fantastic. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I appreciate all you guys. You guys are amazing. I love you guys very much, and we will do this again very soon, my friends.